It's Macy's Friends and Family Sale. With an extra 30% off the gifts you'll love to give. And get 15% off beauty with your coupon or Macy's card. That's on top of big savings, like 25% off dressed up designer looks for kids from Calvin Klein and more. Plus an extra 25% off luggage from Samsonite, Delsey and more. Download the free Macy's app for more great deals at Macy's. Jordan Grace, and you're listening to the Social Suplex Podcast Network. BWB, this is One Nation Radio. You better get it right. Rich Ladder, James Boyd came to give him life. The Blackest Wrestling Podcast has come to kick all ass and drop his six feet if they kick it trash. Word, let me welcome y'all to something different. And if you dig it, man, you should let some friends listen. We be getting it in. That's on the regular, dude. Ravish and flow, but this shit rule. See, James don't rap, so I had to break it down. The whole network, man, we coming for the crown. Raps in the columns, I keep them both covered Making the beats too, so the listeners can bump it Hit us with the rating, yeah, I'm saying it's a five Before you hit it, talk, bob your head side to side It's One Nation Radio, and this is the beginning It's Rich, and I'm here with James It's time to listen to One Nation The power of the this is Mike Sempervivi from WrestlingObserver.com. Check me out on Wrestling Observer Live every day. And also check out your boys, Rich and James, on One Nation Radio. Uh, this is Kenny Omega. We're listening to One Nation Radio. Check it out, guys. These guys know what's up. Big Kenny Omega fans. That's all it counts to me. Goodbye and good night. Hey. Hey, folks. Welcome to this week's edition of One Nation Radio. I'm James Boyd. Here me out Rich Lotta. What's going on, man? Not much, man. Uh... What's up with you, Mr. Birthday Man? Uh, not much. Today is my birthday. Yes, it is. Um, already, uh, before we started up uh, the recording, uh, streamers, uh, they, they've given me some well wishes on my birthday. All throughout the day, I've I've gotten well wishes from people, uh, and I really appreciate it. It's been, it's been fun to see uh, people that have reached out to me. It's been some people that have reached out to me that I haven't talked to in a few years, and I was like, oh, oh, uh, I appreciate it. I'm not going. I'll tell you. I'll talk to you about that after mm. off air, Rich. But yeah. Um, but yeah, it, it's been. Um, hold on. When James dies, <laughs> <laughs> when our streamers are amazing. <laughs> they really are. I wasn't expecting to see lyrics like that. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I'm talking through this whole spill, uh, but yeah, uh, it, it's been a, it's been a fun day, um, and like, I guess it's the offset, like some of the, like the people I share birthdays with in pro wrestling. That I, oh my god, oh, I, there are more people. Yeah, I, I'm discovering by the minute, literally more people that share birthdays so, with James. So you it's know, amazing. over the last few years, people I, people will bring it up, like you know, you know, JBL has the same birthday as you, and I'm like, yeah, I know, this sucks. Um, but when I, when people did that, the guessing game with me and like, they gave me a Dana Brooke and I was like, no, it's actually worse. And then someone gave me one that said, Jerry Lawler. I was like, that tops JBL. <laughs> That's worse than JBL. You can, you can add Dutch Mantel on the list. Yeah. Um, yeah. Then apparently it is also Russell Wilson's birthday. Let's yeah, ride. Yeah. You know? Yeah. You know, I don't mind Russ. I know people, a lot of people don't, but I don't mind Russ. It's kind of similar to the, um, the Alice Rodriguez thing. Like y'all don't mm-hmm. like somebody because they are, they are trying to please you. And I'm like, I don't understand what the problem is exactly with that. Uh, whatever. Uh, but yeah. Also, um, minute, minutes ago, I found out West Coast uh, rapper The Game also shares his <laughs> birthday as well. Now, you know, we're both fans of The Game, but that's also, you know, that's one of the all-time great liars in the history of rap. So that's that's just funny uh, more than anything else. Uh, did you see that Russell Wilson, uh, one of his teammates, yelled at him, like, while going on, like, during an exchange, like, he was running off the field and ra- ran by Russell and, like, yelled at him, uh... I don't know. I don't think there's any anyone knows the context of what he yelled at him about. But you know how. But it's like you normally don't yell at quarterbacks during NFL games. Maybe practice not NFL games. So it's more of the there's those guys resent him. Um, and he just got there. Um, and you know as much money as he's gonna make, he's gonna be there next year too. So uh, that's interesting. Look, look, they better learn in the words of Dave Batista, deal with it. <laughs> so. Yeah. 
<laughs> well, Big had birthday to James. Um, we had uh, you know a, a fun uh, time on the over the weekend, um, and uh, yeah, man, just uh, w- 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 what's what's the years? Oh, thirty five. Man has turned thirty five yeah. on y'all boys. Yeah. Veteran James has been trying to be washed. James has been trying to be washed since we were like twenty three. <laughs> All right, go ahead, go ahead, go go ahead. And give me give me the list of, of things you want to say in, in return to this. I'm sure you want to elaborate. Go ahead. <laughs> no, nah, that's it, really. Oh, okay. You know? Okay. I was gonna but, sit uh, back and let you go ahead and just you know take over the show for the next two minutes. No, nah, man. No, nah, no. Nah, everybody knows. Everybody knows. <laughs> uh, you know. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, man. But big happy birthday to James. Um, you know, best friend in the world. Can't can't do the show without him. Can't can't go through life without them. So um, it's going to be, you know, a, a fun evening. So, um, yeah, man, we uh, ended up watching or I ended up watching uh, yes. <laughs> the WWF Survivor Series dot dot war games. Um, yeah, that's right. Yeah. So, so what were your general thoughts on the show before you go through it? So my general thoughts on the show were, oh, OK, it was a good night of wrestling. Like it was a. um you know the the WWE pay per view formats are always weird because there's only five matches on them, or there's like six matches, and then there's tons of commercials and video packages, recaps. They pretty much got in and out inside three hours. So um, yeah. I was shocked it didn't get to like three thirty with how much they would overstuff it. There was only one real bad match on the night. Uh, a lot of the stuff that I had issues with are just fundamental issues of like some of the stuff that's going on like kind of around the wrestling world right now with like the heel uh, champions and and you know mm-hmm. getting cheered and all the miscast alignment stuff that I don't like and then the weird thing is war games is like the perfect match or t- the perfect match to kind of illustrate those problems so they kind of swing back around uh i was i was writing in the group chat the other day i was like all the problems that exist from like uh like with the bloodline as far as like getting the wrong reactions it almost it is better that they didn't have the advantage like that, that they, that they did the match the way they did, which is like insane because all the problems like just loop back around. So it's like, you're in this, this, this loop of like, yo, this is all fucked up. Like, um, but as far as like the work and like, uh, you know, some of the stuff they were doing, it was a solid show. I, I, I actually liked the women's war games, um, okay. the best, uh, I thought that was like one of the uh, one of the better usage of like the war games like layout because they actually gave the women the correct war games layout um, for the once. first time since the first time they ever did a women's <laughs> war games. Right. Okay. And and they um, basically, uh, you know, it wasn't the most violent thing or anything, but they, mm-hmm. they tried to inject a lot of weapons in there artificially kind of. And it was almost like the cage wasn't really needed. Like it, this was just something like, you know, it was on the calendar and they threw all these people out there. Uh, I liked how they brought Becky back um, the night before, essentially yeah, I saw basically, that. basically because, you know, they were in Boston. They didn't want Sasha Banks chance all night, <laughs> but um, the, the, she's the even only- more like leaned out than before, which was already like, she's way more leaned out than, you know, even like, you know, four years ago, three years ago. Like she is, um, she is really hidden. Like whatever training and dieting thing she's doing, like she is hitting it extra hard. Good for yeah, her. Yeah, man. Yeah, man. Um, so is Bianca right now. I, I think she's training for um some type of competition. So like is usually she's in tremendous physical condition. Either I've never way. seen her not in great shape. She, she's like gone up a level. Wow. Like so I would probably check that uh match out. If I mean, I, I was gonna Okay. Yeah. Yeah, um, we'll move, we can move. We can move on. <laughs> but yeah, I, I guess we can we can start there with the women's war game. So okay. like, was um, that the opener? That, that was the opener. So okay. uh, we ended up having uh, damage control teaming with Rhea Ripley, and uh, there was one was it other Nikki? person, Nikki Cross. Yes, yeah. who they played as crazy and didn't know she didn't know what she was doing. She didn't even know the rules to the match so and all this crazy. So she's stuff. almost like Maxi and Paler in T- Tokyo Joshi Pro. Where she's just, I don't even understand what anything is. Like, what are these social yeah. cues I'm supposed to learn? Like, I'm 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 a you know I'm a person. I'm a I wasn't I was raised by wolves, if you will. Like, yeah, yep. okay. 
Uh, and then they took on the the babyface team led by Bianca Belair, uh, Becky Lynch, Asuka, Alexa Bliss, and then Mia Yim. So they called her the wild card um, in this thing. Uh, like I was saying, it was a it was a good match. I'd probably say like like it's not going to blow your mind or anything because mm-hmm. like they're they've done so many of these these past couple years. But this was like a standard match. That's like if you want to nitpick some stuff, you can. But I don't think there's anything offensive enough to really get upset about. And I felt I'll, uh, I felt like that about most of the show. So, okay. <laughs> um, but yeah, I would probably go like. I'd probably go like three and three quarters, maybe four stars on this. Okay. And um, I thought they, you know, they told a, a nice little story and, you know, the, the, as I mentioned, the traditional war game story. Um, Bianca ended up starting the match. So they saved the big, um, the, the big spot for Becky. Only thing with that is like, you know, the baby faces did end up winning uh, and it was Bianca and Becky standing tall. Becky ended up getting the pin on, I believe it, she did like a um, Dakota a, a leg Magic. drop. Yeah, she did a leg drop on the onto EO and Dakota and like fell on both of them for the pin. Mm, okay. Um, so like damage control continues to suffer. Um, <laughs> so like the only thing is like, all right, I you know, I would think you would want to set up a challenger, and this same thing goes for the men's war games as well. There's no challenger being set up in, in sight for this, but uh, I guess they didn't want it want it to go that way. Yeah. They kind of let Becky kind of stand um tall. So um you know I mean I don't think that's what they'll do, but like if they did stand have Bianca and Becky stand tall, there is a world where like there is a third match. I think that Bianca should beat her for a third time and clean sweep her, but you get my point. Like there is a, there is room for that. Um, but yeah, uh, you know, you mentioned the, the set up a challenger type of thing. And like, that was a weird thing when, um, they would do the women's war games backwards or at mm-hmm. least the one in 2020. Um, because like they did that backwards so that Rhea could then pin, I'm sorry, Raquel could then pin Rhea. And then that set her on the path towards like the, getting the title. But, uh, from EO eventually, um, or yeah, from EO eventually. So, but yeah, it's, um, I guess this one just, you know, whatever, just want to do it backwards, just to do it backwards, I guess. Uh, or at least the, the, um, the main event one. Uh, but yeah, uh, <laughs> damage girl getting paid more than walking lady C ain't no way. <laughs> ain't no way. Hey, look, C won this weekend. But even still, no, <laughs> just just can't be. It's not possible. Uh, so, so but yeah, what was the next did, match? This match did go thirty nine minutes and thirty five seconds. Way too long. They've That's got to cut long. the intervals from three to two, um, and that'll that'll chop eight minutes off the match right there. Um, but you know, if it goes thirty nine, okay, so it's it's five minutes and then every two minutes, right? First five, three, five minutes and every three minutes, I believe. Every three minutes, like okay, so you're you're probably right about that. But even still, 39 minutes, it's that's too long before you can actually even get to everyone in and you can actually start teasing finishes. I I do this every I do this twice a year. I do it during every blood and guts, I do it during every war games. I complain about like there's nothing, there's no stakes, you just watch people do shit until everyone gets in and then the match actually starts. Um I but, think that's even more pronounced than this because it, it, like I said, they brought a bunch of weapons and stuff, but it wasn't necessarily violent or dangerous mm-hmm. or like you didn't think anybody was was really under pressure um, at any time uh, during any of these matches. Really, here's here's my question, right? I don't I don't know if it's ever been done. I'm sure it has. I just haven't seen. It's probably happened in TNA. Has anyone thought of ever doing like Iron Man rules for one of these? And like you just count pinfalls and you get, you know, you say you put it in for put they're in there for 45 minutes or for a half hour and whoever wins at the end wins. Or is that too like, well, that's not necessarily a blow off and this is supposed to be a blow off thing. But then like there's, you know, is that maybe what it is? But but then again, when they I, do I the, this ever heard blow of off thing, doing that. Yeah, but even then when people talk about nowadays, when we get these matches where the woman or was war games or blood and guts, none of these shits actually blow anything off. They just continue feuding on through. So I don't know. But I'm thinking like that could be a way to where like it justifies the time, and then you not have to sit there, and you're just like, okay, nothing, n- nothing, other than cool moves happens. And mm-hmm. I, I mean, I'm not opposed to cool moves. Like this is one H radio, but just like the drama of like you know the 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 swing of aside from 
advantage, disadvantage, advantage, disadvantage. Like, can you add a little bit more to that? Um, like, I, I'm only seeing these ways. Like, can it be, you know, we're counting, you know, you can get pinned any time. It could be, you know, only two people in. Maybe not everyone gets in. Um, it, I, I think maybe the crowd, like, won't buy that now everybody gets in. Like, you're not going to have Eddie Kingston sit there and not actually get in the cage. Um, mm. But with the Iron Man thing, you could be like, okay, well, damn. And it, now it's, Roman Reigns is coming in last and, like, Bloodline's down, like, two. And mm-hmm. there's only, like, ten minutes left. You know, like, I, I think, you know, I think that you could build on something, something like that. Uh, but whatever, I'm That'd always gonna try to. I'm always gonna want to do something <laughs> that's not war games or, or blood and guts. So maybe it's just a me thing. So um, up next, we had uh, the singles match: AJ Styles versus Finn Balor. Um, this was your match that uh, Dave Meltzer is gonna say is like, you know, two professional guys having a, having a nice match, uh, real professional, well worked match while the crowd politely claps. Um, all. I I thought this was okay. This I gave this one like three and a half. Um, I thought these guys, um, you know, when I was watching this, I was like, damn one. They, they, I saw a a graphic on there and they didn't, they didn't mail it in or anything. Um, we were but, a match from like 2018. I was just about to bring it. Oh, okay. So <laughs> <laughs> last minute. So I saw a tail of the tape thing and it was i think wwe like bt sport put it out or something it was like age 45 age 41 for for both of these guys or whatever uh-huh. right and then i saw it i was like oh i i didn't want to see that when when i saw that graphic I saw these guys working i was like man i remember in 2017 like they kind of just rolled out of bed and like you know gave us like a gave us some, something that was like better than this mm-hmm. um quite frankly and uh um, that was 2017 not 18 you're right so it was like, man, you know, I don't know. It was cool. Uh, but I think, you know, they could have uh, at least tried to adhere to their Survivor Series uh, name a little bit. You could have gave these guys, um, you know, teams uh, uh, with them and, and done some type of elimination match here. Uh, but I, I think it's a whole identity crisis with, with this show uh, right now. And Triple H won to, won to bring in war games. But like. You know, the culture of WWE is always Survivor Series. I like Survivor Series mm-hmm. matches and the traditional elimination matches. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, but in theory, you could say that like war games, given what the matches are and these are teams going in and then like it's to the last fall or to the last surrender, whatever, like they do fit the spirit of Survivor Series while not actually being five or while being, you know, uh, Cinco's elimination matches. Mm-hmm. Um, so I, I, I but I do get what you're saying. Like they built it. I mean, this thing has been around for 30 plus years at this point. Um, but I will say, um, it would be a very long show if you did it that way, where you do survivor series, men and women. And then like also, and also like that takes a lot of bodies, like you, 20 women, do they have twenty women on between both rosters to split to even get that done? I don't think they do. Or uh, yeah, so it's um with, with counting the people that are missing and then like on yeah. vacation or yeah. injured at a given time. I I don't yeah. think they do. Yeah, I mean it's only it's only a it's only a you know a few. Sh- I mean Carmella would be in one of the matches. Yeah, you know. Um. So up next, we I think have it's the- also now I'm thinking about it because of who was also in the women's working. I think it's interesting that you did a whole like thing and like not once did you mention anything Alexa Bliss did I think so I think that was interesting nothing there was yeah. there was nothing there um I I was trying to remember something she did and I I, I can't of course EO did her moonsault um Up the top. They, yeah course. yeah they as for the heels that's what like, she's there the, for they they were chanting for tables the whole time and you know the heels did they got get tables in ta- they they got to put the tables in the okay. ring and stuff like that. So uh, they were doing a lot of, a lot of stuff like where the heels were popping people, um, and the whole thing the heels built up to uh, Rhea Ripley, and that was kind of like their their big thing. Like, uh, I, and I can cl- kind of clearly see what they're doing. Like they're pushing Rhea Ripley outside of the women's division, yeah, to, to eventually like put her in it, and then like she's gonna be the one to beat Bianca. Like, I yeah. Yeah. pretty much I, I i yeah like i mean when they started doing the china stuff with her it was like oh okay yeah i mean look and good for her and look and good for her that they finally that they, they, they triple h was like 
Yeah. Vince, you didn't do anything with this woman. She's fucking good. Let's let's push her. Let's get her over. So I'm glad this is all working. Um, oh yeah, since we're already on it and we talk about Thanksgiving or whatever else, WWE they did the video. Um, they put on Twitter where like Rhea and Dom both show up at the Mysterio I saw residence. This. Um, and like you know, Mama Mysterio came to the door. She didn't have a Louis on this time, but she came to the door and was like, she's like. What are you doing? Right? And then like close the door. And then I the, I like the I like the touch, the subtle touch of Ray comes to the door, and as he comes to the door, you can see he's putting the mask on as if like, you know, he doesn't have it. it yeah. I, they tried really hard on this. I really like all the touches on this. I just wish it like they had put it out on uh they had put it on Twitter, they had put it out like on the show. And maybe they just they did that and then also re-aired it on one of the shows. I don't know. Um but like, yeah, uh, you know, they 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 beat up Ray. They they re injured the foot more. Um, I don't know where this is headed to. Like, I don't know how far this could, they could uh, extend this out to. But it's 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 just doing way better for Don than anything else was ever working. I gotta say. <laughs> um, so yeah, uh, like I saw like, probably since probably since some Seth match where he got his ass with, with the kendo stick with uh, him and Buddy Matthew or uh, Buddy Murphy at the time. So yeah, like imagine your child rolling up on Thanksgiving Day and whooping your ass in your own home. You want me to imagine that? What kind of father is Rey Mysterio? I mean, obviously one that doesn't have a gun. Because I, I believe because we I gotta, gotta ask you, these questions. I gotta tell you right now. Uh, I, I've heard of plenty of uh, situations where uh, <laughs> son, son, and, and father do not get along. Father says you're not welcome here. That in father sees son, father go gets gun. <laughs> so Amen. I, <laughs> Amen. Ray Mysterio should have been treating him like Marvin Gaye's pop. Uh, you know. <laughs> Oh, he come out here. Oh no. Oh, we about man. to cock that thing back and bang bang. Oh, you know. Man. Oh man. The the way your mind takes things on a PG show that you know that's not gonna happen is just amazing. <laughs> it wasn't on TV. <laughs> they're gonna re-air it though. You know they're gonna give an update on Ray Mysterio's health. Ray Ray, you know, and Ray brought that thing out because it's <laughs> it'd be like it'd be like hearing that Batman use a gun to stop some criminals. He'd be like, Ray don't use it. Ray ain't use Ray ain't got no gun. Let's stop this. I don't even want even if he does, I don't want to hear that he has it. It just ruins the mystique. <laughs> oh my god. Okay. Ray nine millimeter. Oh my yes. god. Yes. Yes, nine. Holy uh, shit. Six, look, six one nine. Yes. <laughs> um, but up next we had the uh, SmackDown Women's Championship match, Ronda Rousey versus Shotzi, and my God, um, this match has a rating of two point six eight on Cage Match. That's real bad. I don't think it was that bad. However, it's nowhere near good. Um, I've, you know, it's I, really I've hard. Ne- like that's one of the worst matches of the year. Like for a WWE or AEW match, get a rating that low. Yeah, I, I've never really been like. I remember there was a long time where I was trying to figure out if Shotzi was good or not, uh, and it was when she was in NXT. I was like, yo, every match she She's does something fine. like insane, yeah, yeah or, or like kill herself every time, right? Mm. And then Ronda has just been handed a lot of bad opponents um over this year and also not had chemistry with good ones um and they (laughs) they came out here and i watched a video package uh ronda rousey had this you know this eye makeup where she kind of looked like anthony davis i don't know what what was she was going for there but um her and Shayna like like they had this evil thing they were doing um but the 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 video package made you think Shotzi had no chance in hell, and then the match 
was there. Of course, everyone's seen the uh, the clip of the DDT move that Shotzi uh, d- uh, did on the apron, and Ronda either didn't take the move or they just fucked it up, and she just held onto the rope and didn't go down for it. I've seen other people send out the, the move saying, hey, this is how it's actually supposed to go, but the video they would use was also it looking terrible, So I it, and it didn't help Shotzi's like, argument there, um, but this was just very bad. Um, like these videos where they like previous Shotzi doing the move. Yeah, there was uh, one where she she did it to Bianca before, I believe. Mm-hmm. I think once she may have done it to Liv Morgan. Um, mm-hmm. I have to I have to check, but um, yeah, this Ronda Rousey thing's like dead in the water. She's got nuclear heat amongst the the WWE fan base. They all want like, her in, gone. like at the arenas. Uh, the arenas are just silent. They were chanting, mm. we want Sasha during this match at times. Well, it is in Boston. Um, and then, like, Ronda was yelling at uh, Shotzi. She was like, see, Shotzi, nobody cares about you. And then, like, that was like the kiss of death for this match. And it was like, yeah, no one cares. Not only about Shotzi's not the only one they don't care about, Ronda. It's you as well. <laughs> so, um you know, like I said, she has nuclear heat amongst the fan base to yeah. where they're making fire Ronda Rousey trend. Uh, she's beating all the the favorites. Uh, you know, she's going through Liv Morgan shots. She, she's handling all them. Um, and it's, you know, I, she's obviously got the thing with Sasha hanging over her head. Like, you know, they basically move Sasha out the way at WrestleMania for Ronda. Yeah. And none of this is going well uh, for her this year. I, James, I wrote her on the list. For for the put her in the put him in the coffin this year. Well, yeah. Um, uh, like she hasn't had a has she had a single very good match this year? The I Quit match with Char- with Charlotte. That's it. Um, and, and and this is this is really bad. Like this is this is bad. Like the kind of. Um, you know, maybe they can they can figure it out. I I kind of like the dynamic with her and Shayna. Kind of they kind of feel natural, but. I think Ronda's such a, a volatile performer with the audience right now. People are going to allow themselves to get worked by this. They're just going to hate it for real and like and just mm. not know how to deal with it. It's going to be uh, and especially like when she starts wrestling people that are real again. Yeah, like her. <laughs> Or Roman WrestleMania time, yeah. Like it's it's gonna have to be Becky Lynch, like that basically saves her. And it's, it's a good thing that Vince iced that match out so long, and no one wants to see it anymore, right? Yeah, it's you know, good luck Triple H. Um, so, um, yeah. Up next, we got the uh, United States Championship match. Uh, this is Austin Theory taking on Bobby Lashley and Seth Rollins. Austin Theory ended up getting the win, so he wins the United States title weeks after he, um, failed to he, cash in. he fails to cash in, which is hilarious in itself that he cashed in for the U.S. title. Um, they yeah. he he got his ass whooped into a, a title win in this match. Uh, the the finish came uh, when he was taking the second part of the Falcon Arrow, but Seth Rollins was speared and in falling on, he top, landed of on top of Seth Rollins and pins him. So uh, yeah, What's you know, Seth a lot of record on pay per view this year, man. Man, it is not good. Um, <laughs> what was the last pay per view before this? Was it a uh, the Saudi show? I, th- I think the only thing that he won was one of the riddle matches um the okay I, i'm gonna tell you why brew haven uh brew haven said i do not get why anyone thinks he's the future um they put that money in the bank briefcase on him and then triple h was like this is an albatross um and he saw everything that was in front of austin theory but at the same time he was like all right we obviously can't make you the champion anytime soon right now we're not going to take away your push but we're going to try to deconstruct this hand-picked thing from around you this industry plant status we're going to try to do that we're going to embarrass you they're going to have Roman Reigns cut all these promos on you make make you look like a bitch we're going to have you fail cash-ins left and right we're going to make you embarrass yourself and do it for the U.S. title but the push is always coming and this is the push but um I'll tell you also like 
the a certain section of like WWE fans have decided to uh, make Austin Theory their cause. They will rally around him um, because Ooh, there's not a give me some names. The, I don't know any. I mean, look, I, I don't. I, I didn't know there's this not was a, a thing where people like oh, him yeah, like that. because like you know, like I think most people like look at him and they, they're like they like him because you know, he's he, because a jag, he's, picked he's a regular. Him. He, he's a jag like you know a lot of fans I know people I talk to like he's a jag. He's you know he's fine. He's, he's just got the look or whatever right. that they want, and you know. I think that goes far for some people and they just are either either they don't know or they don't want to, to care as, about the, the allegations and stuff like that. And uh, they just see yeah. a youth. They, they see a youth on the show and they're like, yeah, it's him. And, you know, he's he's showed like, uh, I guess, some more aggression the last couple of weeks. He's grown a beard, of course, because, you know, all the all the triple H signs are there. You got to grow a big beard. Uh, pretty soon they'll be wearing leather and shit. And, you know, the transformation will be complete. But well, I mean, you you mentioned the sexual allegation things like, I mean, they're still pushing riddle. So, like, yeah, kind they, of kind of like like I think with riddle, like I think he's someone they will never actually go all the way with they don't trust him i mean that's more of i think it's more of an age thing than anything else because like how old is he 37 yeah he getting up there yeah um but seth uh, is one for eight on pay-per-view this year yeah uh, seth is uh losing this. again everyone or one and eight i'm sorry uh, you know but this was a good match um i, I they, they worked really hard they did some uh creative sequences towards the end um i don't think you know, this was some all time match as I s- saw a couple people try to pass off of like Seth Rollins, this king of triple threat matches thing. Like, I thought it was cool, maybe like four, four and a quarter, something like that. Um, He's the king of four way, ma- uh, three way matches. The only one I can think of is a Royal Rumble match with Cena and Lesnar. Yeah. What's the other one? The Shield triple threat, I guess? I don't, I may. We'll have to we'll have to pull up his uh his match list here, but uh, Brewhaven says, "Do you guys think Seth would leave WWE?" No, I do not. Uh, no. And like the the only way Perhaps that I most could... of the reason why people turn or not turn him or like are um kind of cooled off of him compared to when like let's say uh, seven years ago is like the part where like he's so obnoxiously like WWE like that like he he pretend he acts as if like. Okay, so <laughs> he's like the he's like the three star recruit. He he he's a five star recruit, but like he behaves like the three star recruit that has like the high school or that has like the college logo like tatted on him. Like, bro, relax, take it down a notch. Like, there's that, and then you know Becky, his wife, is there. Um, you know, in Rollins' situation, the only path for him leaving. In a under normal circumstances would be, oh, you're never going to make me the man like a Brian Danielson, you know, the way he left. Mm-hmm. Uh, like, that's not he there for Seth. That. Seth don't, don't care. care. Like, he'll say outwardly a little bit that he wants to be the man and stuff. But deep down, he's he's good with where he's at. Yeah, he don't care. Then we got the War Games uh, 10 man uh, elim- or War Games match with the Bloodline taking on the Euros and Kevin Owens. And those Euros are the brawling brutes Butch, Ridge Holland, Sheamus, Drew McIntyre, and Kevin Owens. This crowd could not have given a fuck about any of these people except maybe Kevin Owens. Um, this whole match was like, I hated this, the, like the layout of all this. Uh, I thought the the performances were fine. I don't think they they rewrote the book or anything. Like I said, it wasn't su- some super violent match. It wasn't some super dangerous match. It wasn't anything like that. Uh, it was them just. This was a long angle essentially. Throughout the show, they had been building up Sami Zayn, uh, you know, talking backstage with Roman Reigns and, you know, Roman Reigns giving him the Godfather hug and stuff like that. And um, they came into this thing, and uh, the the key point of the match was. Uh, Sami Zayn being the second one to come in and he had to go save Jey Uso from getting getting stomped out while Butch and Ridge uh, stomped this man out and there's no reaction like and like everything's fucked up on this match like as far as the the inversion of everything it's like hold on man this whole entire match is designed for the bloodline these heels that cheat every month yeah. That every time I, I I tune in and see this, you know, if I'm a paper, I'm giving you guys the pay per view watchers experience. I'm not watching their week to week, 
you know, stuff, right? Um, so bear with me. But when I watch these guys, there's a fucking mystery man jumping out of everywhere. There's like random people coming out um, to to aid Roman Reigns and holding the belt. These are things that you would think would draw booze, right? But and, and then not also anymore. the part where it's like he has that whole his whole family around him, right? If you will, the whole bloodline around him, and he's manipulating and gaslighting them all the time for his own benefit, and he's a selfish prick. And people are cheering this, right? And like, and, and, and it kind of goes and, along and, with and that. T- I'm gonna get you, let you get your points. Like to me, that just screams like you got the people that are WWE fans. Like they're just turning their brain off and they're just front running because like that's. Like, and that's the case with WWE being such a heat company for the last 20 years or since the, since the screw, screw job is like, there's so much heat. I'm just going to cheer for whoever wins because whoever wins is, is the top face anyway. So whether it was John Cena when he was the top big face, Roman Reigns since then, and Roman Reigns now a heel, they're still cheering for him like he's top face because he always wins. He, they should have turned him back face by now. Yeah, you would think that. This entire match was like designed around... You know, the interplay with Zayn and Jey Uso, uh, Roman Reigns, evening the odds heroically at the end and standing in battle with his f- at full strength team. When I tell you nobody cared about the Euro dudes, no one gave a fuck. It could have been me and you in there with them. Like it, like it was just like Drew McIntyre challenged for the championship uh, a, a month or two ago. Cold as a fucking block of ice uh, sitting there fighting Solo Sokoa. And it's like. Why is he not just kicking the shit out of this guy and destroying him? It just, they, they squared off. It was like a quick little part in the match and then it was moving on. Um, I got a question. Do you remember um, when they were doing uh, the Wyatt's, this is like 2016 or 17, I can't remember. No, 16. And Braun had just got brought up as the black sheep thing. Mm-hmm. And, uh, Ambrose and Reigns needed a mystery partner trying to be Jericho. But before Jericho had showed up as a, as a mystery partner, like two motherfuckers dressed up in SWAT gear walked into the ring next to Roman in, in yes. Ambrose and, and then security probably dry, dragged them out. Like that would be what it would be like. If like you say that if me or you were in there when WWE ring be like, we just showed up and it's like, who are these motherfuckers? Get them. They're not supposed to, they're on the car. They're on the marquee. <laughs> we don't know them. They're not employees. They're, they're not getting paid for this. Like get the fuck out of here. So like, that's what, that's what made me laugh when you said, <laughs> when Bro, you said this you whole match was it. backwards and the war games format illustrated it completely. And the fact the bloodline, like, they had the disadvantage was just it was just comedy because it was like they're so far into the twilight zone on this thing that mm-hmm. it's like the the traditional constructs of pro wrestling just don't matter and a, a lot of this has to do with the way i'm kind of like looking at and like AEW is not exempt from this like this whole thing with mjf has felt fucking weird yep. all summer to me i've been talking about this is weird this is weird this is like the culmination of all that shit like in this bloodline war games match um and, you know, this went 38 minutes, so it was long. Um, I mean, and it was, For a you know, main event match with five people in it, I don't necessarily hate it. I just think that these things should be tidied up to where you say probably 30 minutes, 35 minutes tops. And that's, yep. it, and that's for, like, the damn best ones. Like, I think the main problem that WWE has is, like, these matches will be that long, and, like, you forget what you have to get through from in the third quarter to get to the, the high spots and the crazy shit they do um, to bring you home um, in, in some of these like matches or WWE slash NXT war games or whatever else that they have. Like there's always like a, just a soft third quarter in these things. I want everyone gets in and then it's like they do the uh, meet in the middle thing. And then, you know, then some spots pop off. Then it's, it's like slows down. And then all of a sudden he's back up and then they go have like five minutes of incredible shit. And then they go home. Um, you know, I, I think I'd be much more interested if this was um, Walter leading this thing or Gunther leading this thing against like the bloodline because, but, you know, they're terrified to, to flip them face. Apparently they don't want to change anything. So, um, I, I, I think I think the whole thing is toxic. Like this didn't do anything for any of the baby faces in this match. This was like it, I like, heard that I, they're trying to do like um they're trying to like go towards the Owens and, and Roman thing again. 
right? Do you do you feel that? Did like did they did they give you any hint toward? No, no. It, it, se- it seemed more like Sami Zayn and Owens. Um, okay. If if anything, but you know they they could just like just start doing angles about it. Um, you know uh, the next night or whatever, but not from this. Like you got a big ass stage right here. You would think uh, you want to set something up, but uh once again you know the the bloodline you know goes off the air winning and the crowd is cheering and, and all this stuff and it's just like all right all right so what was it so this, this what, what, so what was the Sami Zayn thing that people were i kept seeing people were so happy about Sami Zayn involved in the story oh Sami Zayn punched kevin owens in the dick um at the end of the match when he was, you know, about when Reigns to, is in trouble or something. Yeah. When Reigns is in trouble. Um, and basically he g- gave the, he basically incapacitated, uh, Kevin Owens, um, to allow Jey Uso to get the pin. And then they, Jey Uso and Sami Zayn hugged and, um, you know, and embrace and Jey Uso like welcomed him and, you know, finally shows that he trusted him, uh, and, and everything like that. So, um, you know, a lot of people were into it. Um, you know, just watching on a month to month basis. This thing's all fucking weird. Like I'm not, like, I, you know, not, not my kind of thing here, but, um, they, uh, as I mentioned, this did nothing for the baby faces. Um, so what do you think of, uh, in the ring? What do you think of solo's call? I don't think we saw enough to really, um, uh, you know, uh, to really make a, a determination on exactly what he is, but he's a small guy. He, he he's going to end up wrestling like you know, like the, like the the he has a rough outline of of every like kind of a uh, you know, Samoan guy of his size, like an Umaga kind of. Mm-hmm. Like he seems like he has that rough outline. Okay, because uh, like that's the thing that's kind of killing me when it comes to this bloodline thing, or why I'm off of it is like okay. You have a faction, it's on top, tag champions, double champion. Like who like what's the thing that's going to dissolve this and who's going to be the breakout person that you build the potential on? And it was like I'm looking at it and I'm like, it's not gonna be Sami Zayn. Sami Zayn will get one title will get one title shot, get destroyed and, or or give it his best shot. You you and you you know I, th- I think people you'll, think, you'll get your hopes think up. You- You'll get your hopes up. He'll lose, and then they'll move on, and then like he'll be back to where he was when he was doing, or about the level he was when he did a conspiracy thing. Maybe a level higher. Maybe he'll be intercontinental champion again, right? I think people are really talking themselves into thinking he's a legit challenger for this no. thing, and I'm like, uh, this isn't 2000. I, this isn't 2015. Yeah. As, as Sir Sam says, and shout out to Sir Sam who uh, who ended up wrapping up um, his podcast on on the uh, Social Suplex Podcast Network this week. Um, you know, he says they have no idea who will be beating Roman. Zero. That's my point. We've been saying this for, for what a year now. Yeah, like, and 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 it's not the worst thing in the world because like he's actually their top guy. So like coming up with with the normal situation where you're like. When you have a heel on forever, is to build up eventually to uh, the baby face to be the conquer baby face, whatever else. Like if they, they hadn't fucked up, the, if they hadn't fucked up the Sting, uh, Hollywood, Hollywood Hogan thing, right? Like we all get that, but there, this isn't about building up a new guy. It's about Roman, and that's why the fans are cheering him because they realize there's no one, there's no one they're building up for this. Yeah, yeah, it, it, it's it's not like look me in my eyes. It is not Cody. No, it's not. It is not The Rock. Who's it old, is, who's it is not Sami Zayn. Who's older, Cody or, or Roman? I think they're the same age. Well, that tells like you they're Like, they're not having a 37-year-old guy beat Roman Reigns. No. Like, it's not happening. Yeah. Like, yeah. Nah. Like, they're not having The Rock beat Roman Reigns. It's not happening <laughs> for the championship. Uh, the person that it, it, it should be should ideally be like, 30 years older or, or, or younger. That's like who typically like would beat someone like in these situations. Now I'm not saying WWE is the same company um, that it was in 2004 mm-hmm. or any other time that, you know, they, they um, were, you know, trying to make <laughs> someone. Uh, <laughs> Sam said MGF was like, you think they, you think they're going to stretch this out to 2024? All right, bro. We will stop covering WWE entirely if they if this shit stretches out that long. I don't think we can go another plus, two years with that one, bro. Uh, 
you know, I, I think MJF signed an extension, but um, <sighs> so I, I think it would be an even longer wait. But um, yeah, I don't think there's anybody over 35 that's going to be taking the belt off of Roman Reigns. Do yeah. with that what you will. Like, <laughs> uh, like all these guys will just be revolving around him like and you know that, that's how they want to run it you know that's how they run it but um you know i'm not fooled by by what's happening here um you know if you're gonna blow how long has he had that thing <laughs> no bruno had a belt for like eight years of yeah, shit it's, it's way longer it's way longer away than, it's way the fuck yeah. out there Rumble like, will be retired no and don't yeah. wrestling but before he can get, even gets close to that yeah yeah that's not not a chance. That's, That's not hilarious. Happening. But um, yeah, this whole thing is uh, you know, look, the, the guys to look out for is, is someone like Braun Breaker. Um, that's that's that would be the uh, in, in like the history of WWE how they would do it. It would be Braun Breaker that would do it. He's in his mid twenties, and you know he's he's jacked. And um, he's got the family name and stuff like that. He does, but he doesn't have the family name because his name. Well, is you're right. Of you're right. You're right. You're right. You're right. But maybe that works for him because they own his name, so they can just you know. Yeah, he own, they, they own his name, but also like that. <clears throat> you gotta remember, like Triple H's booking, and that is Scott's nephew. Do you? How do you think that's really going? That's ever going to work out? I don't know, but like, that. I, I, We'll see. We'll see. Like I think he'll do. I think he'll do well because because he, obviously like he made all the things you we, we, uh, you 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 notice when you watch him. But I, I have my doubts about him making it to the top. I just do because this is this company and like the guys that'll be on top five years now are the guys that are on top right now still. <laughs> so <laughs> like the people were talking about um, Randy Orton having. I think uh, Austin getting, Theory has a better chance than Cody. Oof, that sounds awful. That sounds wrong as fuck. Um, now, people were talking about Orton about Orton got uh, he got like the uh, the lower back fusion thing, whatever. Else. I heard he like, got that Shawn Michaels. Yeah, and people are like Def's like, oh my god, like he's gonna be gone for so long, blah 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 blah. And I'm just like, dude, he's like, how old is Orton? 42, 43, yeah. 44, something like that. Yeah, like this is it. Like, if he comes back, cool. Whatever else, but like, if he comes back, he's taking a spot from he's taking a spot from another person that's over thirty five. Like, this is this is that's kind of problematic. Like, uh, I'm not saying like I, I wish Randy Orton and uh, Big E are healthy enough to come back and do what they want to do uh, on their own terms and finish have their careers out on their own terms. But there's just a glut of guys that they that they see at a certain level that are not. Like they can put it at the top or separate the belts or whatever else, or any of that stuff. And it's like, that's just more of that stuff. James, Bobby Lashley's running around here still getting pushed as much as ever. And he's like 45. Yep. Seamus, 44 years old. Yep. Um, there's, I think they're going younger. Like, or, look, Roman's still on the younger end of things. At 37. <laughs> Look, AJ uh, Styles, Damian Priest, Finn Balor. These these are all old guys, like you know, wait, older is guys. Priest as old as uh, Balor? Priest should be older, if I'm not mistaken. Um, and you know, I thought, I have, he, I thought he was I, like seeing, around 38. I'd be seeing people pining to to give um, you know L.A. Knight some push as like he's this young prospect, like he's 39, like. Look, uh, LA Knight, fooled, man. Look, LA Knight was out here sharing, like living with with uh, Dean Ambrose, John Moxley, in in uh, in Florida for NXT. He's old, bro. Um, yeah. So no, like, no, not saying that being old or whatever else is a is a thing or like or being so uh, age obsessed is a thing, but it's like you look at the the age, you look at the TV age, whatever else, and like some of these people that like, have been around forever. And it's like you you already know them and you already know where they're slotted. So you don't have reason for optimism given the history of WWE over the last 20 years. I think that like they're going to buck that trend. There's not really much there in that terms. Like you get <clears throat> slotted and that's kind of your lot in life until you're done or they're done with you. Yep. And, and I think that's something, um, you know, 
New Japan and AEW have young champions right now. Say what you want about, you know, Jay White or MJF, but they've like at least like looked to that next kind of generation. So they at least have these guys going forward, right? Um But, but that's the thing though, Rich, right? What are what are Will Ospreay and Jay White's ages again? You just mentioned? I believe Jay White it may be twenty nine or thirty. Um and MJF is twenty six. I remember people talking about him being twenty, uh, JY being twenty six in two thousand nineteen. I think so. That's yeah, that's about right. Day. That's about right. So, but that's the thing, though, right? Those got in New Japan has those guys at you know twenty nine or thirty right now, right? He just turned thirty. Okay, so thirty and Osprey's twenty nine, right? But you already know what's going to happen. They're gonna they're gonna one one more year, two more years, whatever else. WWE is gonna come knocking their contracts over, or AEW, and especially someone like Osprey. And, and what you gonna get? You gonna get Osprey at, at the you know the twilight of his prime. You gonna get him like the AJ AJ Styles situation when he first came in. It's like, oh my god, look how fucking awesome he was for the first two years, and then it's like now. Injuries, all the injuries have caught up. Stat, all the injuries of uh, that he's done all these years, doing all these crazy shit to get to this point. He finally has a chance to show us the earnest spot or whatever else uh, coming in, hits the ground running, and then everything else after that is the vacation on the back end. <laughs> and I, there's, no, there's no nothing necessarily wrong with that, but it's like it, it's just a, it's just a weird feeling right now with like looking at. Um, I guess American or I almost said American speaking English speaking wrestlers right now. It was like the cream of the crop, like under 30. I, it, it just feels weird right now. It feels kind of soft. I don't know why. Maybe it's because AEW took over the Indies. I don't know. Um, but it kind of feels like there. I, I can't p- pick like thinking of maybe it's still Osprey. And I'm just like overlooking it because Osprey is like, seems too obvious. Maybe that's what it is. I don't know. But like looking at like who could be the quote unquote next, I don't even mean necessarily the next guy as far as like the top guy or whatever, but like the next person that's going to be like someone they could push really super hard. Everyone will be in, and most people will be into it. Um, Crudler says, could Logan Paul be the guy to beat Roman? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. He's I actually could. like, if, if I were to lay out everything on paper of their available options right now, and he comes back and he was like, yo, I want to do this like yeah. for real. Yes. Yeah. Um, a reason why I wrote him off is because like, I don't know what his injury situation is right now. And like, you know, it's a di- like he, while he has done a few wrestling matches, I don't know if he's in that mindset of like, I'm okay with I, like, I'm okay with like doing a whole bunch of rehab when shit goes left uh, for the rest of my life. Like, like these people are that are lifers in this. So I don't know. Um, so yeah, that's kind of the reason I, I didn't think of him, but that's the reason why I kind of like didn't even he didn't even come on my radar just now. But yeah, he could definitely if he if he hadn't messed up his knee, I would have been like, yeah, definitely, I can see that. I could definitely see him on the short list. But that would be weird too because that's so unconventional. Yeah, um, yeah, but um, I guess we should uh, move on to uh, AEW Dynamite this week. Uh, this is the pre Thanksgiving episode. Actually, did really good rating uh, in the demo. Com- comparatively um, speaking to the other years, yeah, yeah, it was up from last year, so uh, it was point three two. So um, good for them. Um, so they opened, uh, and William Regal was in the ring. This is the show uh, right after um, Full Gear. So they were in Chicago, Illinois. Uh, they opened up. Uh, Regal was in the ring. He said MJF's not here because he was filming a movie, but he's going to be here next week. Uh, he said he knows people are wondering about the relationship uh, between them, and he reveals that he sent him an email a couple weeks ago. Moxley then came out. He didn't want to hear none of that shit. He looked like he was going to uh, spark Regal, but um, Danielson came down uh, and got in his way uh, and dropped down to both knees um, and basically says, you know, I don't know why Regal did what he did, but, you know, we all make mistakes and he's trying to clear everything up and stop Moxley from whooping his old ass. Um, And, you know, he he ends up slapping Moxley and he said he doesn't care. People boo. Uh, he tells Moxley that, you know, his father shared the same struggles as him, like with the alcoholism and Regal was here to guide him. Um, <clears throat> after that, Moxley was, you know, just kind of thinking and he was like, yo, I only want one thing. You better leave and you better never come back. And then uh, Regal was like, I'm out. 
Yeah, which led to people immediately assuming he was going back to the E, and I was like, based on what? Like, uh, why do people? Why do people think that everyone is trying to get out of AEW to go back to WWE? It's James, so, it's weird we, we to me. Did a, we did a segment earlier this year where we said you can write anything about AEW and someone will believe it. Yeah, yeah. There may be smoke to the fire on that because Dave's like in between shit. He can't actually report about it. So it's something to watch, but like just based on what you saw on TV, I think that's a leap in logic. <laughs> that's why that's what I was getting. It's like, I don't, I don't think he's not ever coming back. Like I think the heat is he comes back and then it pisses Moxie off all over again. Like, Oh, you came back. Huh? Yeah. I told you not to come back. You came back. I will murder you with my with my hands. So up next, we got the um, All Atlantic Championship match. Oh, was- before we move on forward, there are people talking about Tyler Bate um, as far as why he can't be the guy. And like, you, do you know and, how tall he is? Right. And like Sam said, he's probably too short. He's not probably. He definitely is too short. It's not. It's not going to happen. He's incredible. Yeah. Like you know, I, I think. Talent wise, he's one of the fifteen or so best talents in the world right now. It just I don't get to see him as much as I used to. It, it is what it is, but I don't think that I don't think that he'll ever get a, a legitimate shot because he's like five foot six or five foot seven or something, something very small like that. Yeah, he's incredible. Uh, though. Very Sam, just Sam brings up something. Uh, he said there were wrestling media trying to suggest brawl out was a bigger deal than Vince retiring. You can write anything. Uh, yeah. Um, yes, I saw Sean Ross. Yeah, he's stuff. like, yeah. What's the and biggest new? Yeah, what's the biggest thing in wrestling this year? But aside from ball, this. aside from the brawl out, CM Punk, the elite thing, and I was like, the most important f- non wrestler in the history of professional wrestling had to resign in disgrace because he's using. Because he, he was using money to pay off affairs. What are you talking about? Oh, That's I'm the biggest gonna, story in wrestling since what? I'm just going to say this. Sean Ross Sapp, you might have the, the verifiable traffic. Like, you can probably pull some receipts on, you know, whatever's driven traffic to, to your website and your business and stuff like that, right? However, in the real world, where... We don't we have no we're not beholden to anybody or trying to maintain relationships or like, you know, or we're trying to, you know, maybe it's just good a, with maybe, WWE. Maybe this is just a gigantic omission. I don't know. I, I, I don't know what what it is. But like in the real world, like this Vince McMahon thing is way larger than that. Like I could I could call my mom right now and talk to her about the Vince McMahon thing. She'd be like really i could call her and talk about the brawl out thing and she'd be like who why do i care about this at all um that i I think is this the biggest thing since benoit yes yeah I, i think so yes like this is such a gross like manipulation of like the way AEW is covered compared to how things in WWE are covered. Like, yeah. that's just what it is. And it, it this is as ridiculous as, like, we can kind of illustrate this. I think like, it's also the time thing. Like, it's far more recent, the brawl out stuff, and also the, the some of the fallout things, like the Vince thing. Like, actually, uh, I forgot when it was. I, I randomly, like, went to Vince's this. Twitter. He has to know this. I think I, I, think I randomly went to Vince's Twitter. I'm sure he does. Uh, I think... I think after he slid off that tweet and people immediately said Vince, he's like, oh, I fucked it up. Um, but I I went to Vince's Twitter, like, I don't know why, probably like last, like, week or two. And, like, his last tweet is still the, the retirement tweet. He, he, that shit. That man that uninstalled shit, app. Yeah. That shit, that shit shut down. Um, like, that, he will not be using that thing ever again. He will not. Look, he was not out here like us a week ago wondering, like, what was Twitter going to crash forever? Like he, yeah. he, he, no, like tw- Twitter. I don't give a fuck. I'm done. In fact, we don't even know if he actually was using that thing. But imagine if he was, he sent that tweet, delete account, look, or through the look through the phone in the trash. <laughs> fuck, I need this for. Yeah, I'm done. <laughs> Man, I got a flip phone now. Shit, probably. Um, <clears throat> but yeah, um, yes, Sean. That's that's ridiculous. Like, like you have a responsibility. You botched that one, man. Correctly. You botched that one. Don't mean to get on you that much, but Jesus. Um, 
All Atlantic Championship match, uh, Jake Hager and his hat against Orange Cassidy. Um, this one was well received by the crowd. Uh, I was kind of half paying attention because I was working on Thanksgiving dinner during this. Um, and, you know, I kind of came to a stopping point later uh, in the show. But uh, this this looked real hot, looked like the crowd popped for the finish. I enjoyed this match. I saw a few people, a few people like just didn't. They, they thought it was too dumb and silly. And I was like, well, that, I mean, do you want to see a, a legitimate like big bruising MMA guy fighting Orange Cassidy? Or do you want to see a big bruising guy that's like affectionate about his hat and like Orange Cassidy trying to get his hat in? I, I enjoyed the match. I thought it was just fucking ridiculous. <laughs> I thought it was absurd that all the things they went through and stories they went through to get to this hat and in like in in near fall. I, I I enjoyed the match. And um, Orange Cassidy like is probably uh, very similar to the Ethan Page match, where it's like this dude clearly is like he's trying to because he's so small. He's trying to do like the I'm going to body <clears throat> slam Andre in Detroit or in Michigan. Like with uh, Ethan Page, it was a similar thing where it's like I'm just going to like try to get his hat and there were all these different scenarios and like people around the ringside add to it. And I thought it was a fun match. Uh, I mean, I thought it was a good match. I thought it was a good match. It's a ridiculous match, but it was a good match and I enjoyed it. Yeah, man. Um, yeah, I, you know, I think this is the best stuff Jake Hager's may have ever been involved <laughs> with uh, in his career. Like Don't I touched the hat. Yeah. Like, you know, purple bucket hat. Going on the list. And the hat is so stupid looking. That's why. <laughs> like, I wonder who got high and in, 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 in came him. up with this one. Was him. it him or was it Jericho? Somebody got high and was like, how, how, what if I was just like really, what if Hager was just really into his hat? Bro, it, Jericho <laughs> got to be helping him with this. Like, he was like, you need to glue that thing to your head, shower in the hat, sleep in the hat, oh, you know, pray man. in the hat. Pray you know? in the hat. <laughs> You know, hang out with Mrs. Hager in the hat. You know that would be funny. That would be funny if they did like they brought back Mrs. Hager because she was actually good. And like they're doing like I don't know like the twenty four seven stuff that they kind of do. And like they're showing him like around the house and like she's like he just won't take off this fucking hat. <laughs> Look, w- would it be funnier if that was his only hat, or if he like, or if there was some closet that opened and he had like a, a fucking dozens wall? Of them? Yeah, he had like dozens of them. I think dozens of them like is funnier to me, and also like in my mind, like I can be at peace with that because otherwise it's a funky ass hat after a certain amount of time, <laughs> right? Like, you can't be out here with this. this like, I don't want to be around for when his purple hat turns brown. That's that's disgusting. Yes, um, I saw him taking a picture in a Publix shopping. Uh, with no shirt on and hat uh, in the frozen section. Oh, so, my gosh. Wow, that boy is wilding right now. But um, up next, we got the finals of the World Championship Eliminator Tournament. Uh, and this was Ricky Starks versus Ethan Page, as you know, I called a couple weeks ago. Uh, Ricky Starks ended up getting the win. Lots of selling in this match. Uh, this man came out taped up like he was King to Tank Hammond. Um Just... <laughs> Just everywhere, just like, all right, man, we get it, bro. Like, <laughs> we we get that, you know, the, the baby face injury sympathy. I, I understand, buddy. Was his um, shoulder messed up, too? Yes, I believe okay. so. So, okay. Um, but um, yeah, this this was a solid match. Um, the crowd was, was really into it. Um, uh, crowd was like in the pretty much everything, like, they got a fucking killer show. So, um, you know, shouts out to these guys for not like turning the crowd down or anything. Um I thought this was this was pretty good. What, what town were they, they anything in? blow away? They were in Chicago. Oh that's right. So Oh like, how could I forget? Yeah. How yeah, we'll get there. But um yeah, so like, you know, I you know, I wanted to see the offense. You know, I wanted to see the cool moves, the sequences, something. Yeah. Still ain't seen it. We still ain't seen it, James. Yeah. I mean he's about to face MJF. We may never see it in this particular uh like sequence of matches. And I can tell you how um, why this isn't real, um, why why this is not a true kind of elevation right now. Oh, okay, yeah. I'm gonna say, I mean, it's, it's professionally like it's fake. No, 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 <laughs> no, 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 wait, no. Wait, 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 what? Okay, like, go ahead. You know, I've, I've seen people who were very excited about about Ricky, like you know, getting this like elevation, just like a little mini push right here. Um, when you don't beat anybody on the way like that's like a top star or anything 
you don't become a top star by not beating top people. Unless so, you beat tons of people consecu- like consecutively right. in like dominating fashion a la Warlow, Goldberg. You get picked. Like get dominating picked. impressive fashion. Like yeah. I, this was, uh, what, what was there to really be impressed by? Like maybe the selling, like, yeah, you know, he's a good seller and like, you know, a good crowd connection. But, but and that, maybe but that's, that's all you though. need, like, right? If, I don't think so because if you're number one trait, but if, because if your whole matches are about like all about your selling, all of your matches about all about your selling is like, at what point are you the, actually an ass kicker? Right. You're just out there getting your brains beat in and you're tough right. and you get a lot of respect for that. But like, that's someone that'll, you know, you know, push to the top in that kind of way like what is spectacular about him what stands out about him and like if you say the promos um i'm I'm with you but they don't use him in promos enough to kind of get him to where he could uh he could utilize that enough for him like i think his promos and the way they've used it has gotten him to where he is now where the crowd is behind him but like they haven't given him the mic and let him do that to elevate himself to a main event or top status in the company yet um I think he has the talent to do it and the charisma to do it. So um, if that's what they want to do with him, fine. Uh, but I think this is the beginning of the journey and not the end, if you will. Yeah. Um, so st- still on the road here. Yeah. Like, like so I think like, this whole like point when- is get him to here. He loses and then he is he chases from there. That's yeah. what I think they're trying to do with him. Yep. Um, so after that, we got match two the best of seven series uh, for the AEW world trios championships, death triangle versus the elite. <laughs> Another one. Another one. Legendary match. It, it, legendary crowd response. Um, <sighs> They booed the shit out of them in a way that I didn't imagine. Like I, I, I knew they were going to get booed. I didn't know it was going to be that bad. They got the fuck the elite chance. Uh, they did turn them around uh, during the match with the, with the fuck CM Punk stuff. Um, they, you know, they, why did people, why did people like, I know, you know, like this isn't Matt Matthew's fault, but cause Botchamania is very funny. And if you're in the context, you realize it's a celebration of pro wrestling and even the quirks and mistakes are beautiful, if you will, or something worth, or worth, worth, worth remembering. But the culture around the, the, you know, a W W E stuff has turned into like someone fucks up and like now it's referendum on like that person as a wrestler. So like Matt Jackson did the botched <laughs> buckshot the lariat, which was which was a play on how CM Punk fucked it up twice in his match with Hangman with a title change, and people forgot about that and was like Matt Jackson fucking sucks as a wrestler and this is why I've always said that like he like him and the, him and his brother Nick Worked. were always shitty wrestlers and they see what they're doing they're fucking and so it was like no you fucking mook like this was <laughs> this was on purpose yeah yeah um, terrible storytellers terrible yeah. storytellers this crowd was molten <laughs> insane one of the best matches in dynamite history right here um the there was like a hundred Mexican guys in the front row that were going insane and, and doing the Olay chants. Um, the like I mentioned, the yep. the, the fuck the elite chants. Which also adds to the part like Lucha Bros are always over as fuck in Chicago. I don't. <laughs> I I maybe maybe they wrestle in AIW or something. I don't know, but like there or or maybe. I don't even know if they did black label pro. I don't know if they, they did a lot of AAW. Pro. Yeah, maybe they made this what it was. And like, bro, they're they're uh, every time they done it, like from. The all out stuff, I'm sorry, the all in stuff to, you know, um, double or nothing. They've always been over as fuck in Chicago. Like this match was an illustration of, of why I like the elite so much. Always like they always like I don't know what it's going to take for people to understand that you can't like troll these dudes or, or give them some type of reaction they don't expect because they always adjust like on the fly if this happened in like wwe and this was happening they would be forced to wrestle as baby faces and the match would have just continued to be hijacked and yep. it, it, it wouldn't have been engaging at all what these guys did was like all right y'all want to y'all want to give it to us all right we're gonna give some back to y'all and allow y'all to kind of you know do it with the Kenny real workers the fucking... interacting with the crowd what the crowd's yeah. giving them I, I thought that was what the good workers did 
yeah yeah the the gts stuff the the fucking botches of the uh of the fucking uh uh buckshot the biting that kenny did the the go to sleep taunt um and then kenny jumping on twitter twitter and saying what's up to kenta essentially you know thanks for letting me use the move like bro they're fucking light years ahead um but yeah i was i was reveling in in watching this match this was this was incredible um and you know, just on the work of the two teams, of course, it was fucking awesome. It's fucking yeah. Death Triangle and the Elite. Um, yeah. yeah, it's like James. People were once concerned that these two teams wouldn't have enough to do. It would just be the same match over and over again. James, um, I'm sorry. They've. <laughs> they, I'm willing to let Death Triangle and the Elite figure it out. If Sheamus and Cesaro could do that, no disrespect to those guys, <laughs> but like I'm willing to to take this uh you know th- this journey with them. Um, so uh, Chris Fisher says the Elite are probably the best ever at adapting. Yeah. This was like, I feel like, um, you know, the young bus looked at each other and was like, oh, so like all the stuff we were doing in PWG, this is where we get to fucking display this. OK, cool. Um, also, like and, they were just they were just hills like last year. Yeah. Like This is it. This is like, oh, my God. They, they've never, I don't know how they're going to be able to react to crowds. Like, do you not remember all the ridiculous shit they were doing? Where like, yeah, Nick Jackson doing Macho Man, and they're—I mean, I mean, it, I mean, it happened here. Like, one of them was air hunching on the apron the whole time yes. for like half a minute yeah, to, to, to the to the fuck the yeah. punk chance or fuck the elite chance. And yeah. yeah, it was it was uh Nick Jackson. So like on BTE, like he was like, yo, if, if they start booing us, we're gonna cheat or whatever. We're gonna do it. It was, it was hilarious. It was like they knew the shit was coming. Um. Yeah. Like, who couldn't have foreseen that they were going to be booed in Chicago? Who couldn't have foreseen that? Yeah. Yeah. So, like, I, I at the end, I thought they owned this this this, this crowd. Like, awesome. you know. Yeah. This was Awesome this was match. Incredible. And then, like, still, like, <laughs> Penta brought out his own fucking hammer. It's <laughs> a so Gallagher tribute. Um, <laughs> oh, it was a great, man. It was great. Yeah. Great match. Uh, Matt, Matt Jackson um, takes the hammer this time. Um, and after putting his mouth all over the hammer, um, he was uh, <laughs> he got clocked by that bitch, <laughs> right? By that, yeah. Um, so, um, so yeah, man. more more acting more acting foolish and immediately getting you know getting the shit kicked out of you. You know, you know. I, I thought these guys didn't know how to work, James. I, I you know, I I thought this was you know this is so this weird, is man. massive, you know channel changer and all this other shit like um but yeah they go down to nothing uh death triangle goes up i think this would be the perfect time for uh the elite to get in the game here rather than doing the uh 3-0 comeback story yeah, that, that, that's too preposterous because like no one's gonna buy that for a second and they're going they're not getting to a seventh match come on did, did you hear did you hear the preview for match three that uh that i created james yes i did <laughs> <laughs> so um i actually put this out on twitter uh this afternoon and this thing has gone kind of wrestling twitter viral it looks like um got about 400 over 400 likes and almost uh like 80 almost 8800 views on the video i'm gonna pull this up on the stream here uh and play it for you guys if you haven't seen it but um yeah let's find this real quick so Here we go. This is game three of the AEW Trio Championship Series. Currently, Death Triangle, led by Pac, have stormed to a 2-0 advantage over the heavily favored former champions, the Elite. The Elite have appeared at times overconfident, but at the same time distracted in big moments. Game two in Chicago proved to be distracting for the Elite as they were at war with the crowd almost as much as Death Triangle themselves. As far as Death Triangle, they hold a 2-0 lead, but this could easily be 2-0 Elite if not for finding a way to hammer things home late in each game. They need a fully focused effort to put this series out of reach as they look to take an insurmountable 3-0 lead. Kenny Omega has been fantastic aside from leaving himself open at the end of game one. He and Nick Jackson have been automatic. Matt Jackson is under intense pressure from wrestling Twitter, and many are calling for him to be traded to the Guangdong Tigers if he cannot step up in game three. It's a pivotal game three this Wednesday on Dynamite. Yeah, so that's your preview for uh, game three. Uh, that's going to be 
awesome. So as and they'll be in Indianapolis and they're trying to basically uh you know make it the winter is coming so so they don't uh stay they stave off elimination. You you don't want to go down 3-0. It's it's not good. You're right. You don't want to go through down. Thank you, Charles. <laughs> like, does she love like it's so weird like now that we do like the content game or whatever else. Like the th- you know a lot of that stuff is like you watch people just for vibes, right? You want to, you know, like you remember Charles Barkley. You know he's funny as hell. Mm-hmm. Same for Shaq, whatever else. So when they give the, the analysis and like, but then I hear their actual like basketball analysis, like the X's and O's is like, oh, I cringe at times and wince. But like, it's still them. So you still, but so, so they're still able to be interesting or whatever's so entertain so many people. But I'm just like, I can't believe people watch this stuff. Still, seriously. Yeah, yeah. And like, let me wrong. Like when they're out here, you know, ripping each other, it's still like, it's still the best fucking thing on sports <laughs> besides the games. But it's still just like, uh. But yeah. Um. Anyway, uh, what was after this? So yeah, after uh, you know Death Triangle picks up the win, um, we got Renee Paquette announcing that Thunder Rosa and AEW have come to an agreement, and uh, she has relinquished the AEW Women's World Title due to the uncertainty of her injury. Jamie Hader is announced as the new champion. She gets a big um, video screen of it. They later on commentary clarify that Tony Storm's interim reign. Um, has been retroactively made uh, official, like she was the official champion. I don't know, man. I think people would care way too much about this shit, like as far as like the the calling something the interim championship and stuff like that. I don't know. I like interim belts. I, I, I think people look at them as like they're fake or illegitimate or something like that. It's like I saw all those people reacting to this match. They definitely cared when, when, when Jamie Hader won, like, they didn't react to this like this belt wasn't didn't mean shit or something like that so a lot of the stuff I, and i think it's the wrestlers that's doing it honestly that's just like oh, i don't want to be called no interim champion like it's like a you know right right, right. it's like a, it's like a point of pride thing maybe but you well, know it, yes and it's also what the fuck else do you expect them to say like you're trying to sell the story of when the eventual champion returns so they can immediately go to the match because that's the reason why you do the interim thing is because like even without even if there was an interim title, champion goes down, there's a new champion, old champion comes back. The first thing you 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 need to fucking do is have the champion that never lost get a title shot with the current champion. It's an easy money sell. It tells it is easy story. It's a layup. Like you would all think- it is. It's sports, like, and then right. people just just their heads explode on this. And I'm like, yo, you're like throwing a storytelling crutch in the garbage, essentially, like with this petty complaining about this. And I'm like, why don't I don't like I don't get it. I don't know why they're doing that, but it's uh, I think I think they like the particular wrestler in hope that they're like the work that they're doing while uh, given opportunity is not forgotten or is appreciated. And even though I don't think there's really anyone that's saying, well, it's a fake thing, but it's like, well, it's all fake, but whatever. Um, but like, I think people are getting um, suckered into that because like the wrestlers, when they're in the interim thing, say they don't want it. But it's like, what else are they supposed to say? Like, it's literally their job to, in a, in a long form way, say that like, this match is going to be coming eventually. The, it, like, the Moxley CM Punk thing was always going to be coming eventually. Like... If the Thunder Rosa Tony Storm thing was going to happen, unfortunately, Thunder Rosa can't come back in a certain amount of time to make it actually work. So therefore, they decided to move on, uh, which is unfortunate. But it, it's what had it happen apparently. So whatever. James, did you hear the thunderous applause when they when yeah. they uh, when Thunder they announced Thunder Rosa would be giving yeah. up the championship? There's yeah. a lot of weirdness wrapped up in this right now. And, and the and, Thunder and, Rosa and, fans were not on Twitter were not happy about that cheering. They were like, not. There was that. Um, there's like the wrestlers doing weird stuff on Twitter. Like I saw Nyla Rose make some joke today about like really? her, and, like they put like. Um, like her face paint kind of digitally imposed on her body. And, and they were like, um, Nyla Rosa. And then she was like, uh, I laughed so hard. Like my back hurt or something like that. I forgot. Um, and it's just like, there's something going on like with, 
the oh, um w- with the Britt Baker uh Jamie Hader's uh you know faction right. that side and, and the thing is you can't tell or whether or not comments. they're working you can't tell whether or not they're shooting or working and then because it's Twitter you just like you just kind of take it as they wouldn't they wouldn't bury someone in that way to make it seem like they're faking an injury even if it, right. so it, yeah yeah it's all yeah. Yeah. It's all fucked up right now. Yeah. Like and yeah. And you, you almost wonder when Thunder Rosa comes back, can like they like this is gonna be, be another Molotov cocktail. Are, are they, are, and, and Tony Storm's are not they, a Thunder are they gonna Rosa have a, are they either. gonna have a are they gonna have a wrestler a meeting with the wrestlers when she, as soon as she comes back? I would suggest or, or, or do they save that for when CM Punk comes back? Which one? Oh my god. I, I, I don't know. Okay. Um are you, but, are, are you are you still thinking he's gonna be gone or are you come to my thinking of like they see are you coming back to my line of logic where it's like Tony Khan's making these moves like he he clearly wants CM Punk to come back? Oh, he he definitely wants him back. Yeah, but I I just don't think it'll happen. We'll see like in I, like six months. So, uh, yeah, we will see. But um, Bills Mafia they have a dedicated bathroom set aside for when Thunder Rosa comes back. God damn it! Um, <laughs> I forgot about that detail. <laughs> Look. Look, look. Maybe, maybe it's better that that Thunder gave up the belt because instead of having to come back and fight Jamie, maybe. Um, no, no, no. The best would have been like Thunder Rosa has the back thing, and then like Jamie has been lighting people up with that backbreaker. Like, <laughs> was that intentional? <laughs> you would have you would have had people online talking about what she's trying. Was Jamie trying to fuck up Rosa's back? Bro, I, I can see we, it now. I can bro, see it now. I'm actually we, even happy we, we yet. Could, we could randomly start the rumor and it could get picked up by people. Oh, uh, let's we, we not. Could, we I could, don't want to be. I don't want to be part of that. We could make it up out of thin air, James. <laughs> <laughs> we could, but we're not hacks. All right. Um, so going from the elite dancing on CM Punk's grave in Chicago to this announcement, the next person on screen is Britt Baker. Um, essentially, like. Th- Gloating. It in gloating. Yes. Th- gloating. gloating and laughing and throwing it in Thunder Rose. Which is face. more, we don't know if it's working or if it's a shoot. Bro, it, like, this this was just an incredible, like, you know, half hour of, of like, fucking programming and just seeing people, you know. <laughs> throwing jabs. Like, yeah. yeah, it's some real Sean Brett 97 shit. Come Bro, on. Bro, it, it shit is crazy, but, um, they took Britt Baker and Jamie Hader took on the team of Sky Blue and Willow Nightingale. Man, talented team. Um, and uh, after that, uh, Britt and Jamie got the win. I, I, I didn't really, yeah, I was still kind of checking Twitter uh, on all that uh, post uh, trios match stuff. <laughs> but yeah, yeah. Um, I need Hero to go back great. and watch the Rampage. That. I need to go back and watch that Rampage match between uh, Jamie and Will. I heard it was really good. Yes, because I saw I saw them in the ring together. And I was like, this was fun for a short amount of time. So I wonder what the actual match was that people were talking about. Like, oh, I, this was a three way. Sorry, that's Rick right. Baker and Jamie right. Hader versus TJ versus Sky Blue and yeah. Will Nightingale. Yeah, this was it's all time match. Uh, here, so, um, oh, God. but, <laughs> um, yeah, so after that, uh, Britt and Jamie got the win. Uh, I believe Sky Blue was the one that got pinned, I think. I, I don't quite remember. Um, but after that, we got the acclaimed and Billy Gunn making their way down to the ring. Um, and they hyped up their win at full gear. Um, yes, the aesthetics were present. Um, and, uh, Bowen's basically asked uh, Billy to scissor him. Uh, then all of a sudden, <laughs> wait! <laughs> God damn it! I'm, I'm, I'm reading the comment section, and all of a sudden I hear he's holding the scissor. Him. Wait, what? I'm, I'm sorry. Continue. <laughs> My immature ass. I'm sorry. Please continue. It's so stupid. Hey man. <laughs> um, uh, <laughs> You know, oh my god. S- stick around for the post show, y'all. Um, but yeah, uh all of a sudden uh Sanjay Dutt, Lethal, and Jarrett pop on the screen and sat in them. Uh Jarrett says they want to talk smack, they'll give him something to talk about, and presumably Team TNA may be getting the next crack at the acclaimed. Um when he raps about Jeff Jarrett, I'm gonna die laughing. I hope he's up for the challenge. 
because because it's not it's not just writing something. It's like it's also the process of like what do you what do you what material do you use? Right, because there's so much. You got to narrow it down. Right, gotta, that's what. Like that's that's the reason why I'm not a writer. But <laughs> well, I don't write as much as you do. Or, or uh, uh, like during this whole like one inch radio era, because it's like I, having a lot of things to say is the problem. It's what to pick to say is the problem, and I find it to kind of be uh, um, overwhelming. So like, yeah, uh, it. <laughs> There's a lot of stuff that he could say in the four bars. Like, quite frankly, like this is the time he should have asked for another four bars. But whatever. Yeah. Um then oh my god. The ROH World Television Championship, a match made for Rich Ladder's heart, a second match uh, of the night. Uh Chris Jericho versus Tomohiro Ishii. And it popped a number, James. Um, it did? Yes. This shit went up. Y'all got to kiss my ass. <laughs> Tomohiro Who are these Ishii? Japanese guys? Assholes. Tomohiro Ishii is a Wrestling Observer Newsletter Hall of Famer. And this match, it, I, I don't know how you watch this match and then you decide on your ballot. No, I'm not going to do this. This is one of the greatest wrestlers of all time. Chris Jericho stood in this match. Got his chest beat to hell. Um, these two guys beat the holy living shit out of each other. This was like a dedication to like Tenryu or something. Like this was like, I, Jericho is just like, like bro, like we we gonna have to we gonna have to talk about it. It, it, like like people are you know running around and you know there's this imaginary wrestler of the uh, year or most outstanding for Dax Harwood going on. Is he even better than Chris Jericho this year? I would say no. In singles, absolutely not. No. <laughs> like, like you pull bro. up the singles resume. Like, here's the thing. Like, first off, I'm just going off the precedent, right? Like, I forgot where Kenny Omega finished in 2020. Um, he but won. Most outstanding. Yeah. Over Osprey. I know he yes. broke his neck, but Osprey still. was injured. Yeah. Okay. Think of the year that took in the kind of tag matches he had, right? He had one of the three best tag matches I've ever seen in my life in, in that span. Um, and he also had like the match with the, uh, the match with Penta, the 15 minute sprint five, five and a half or four and a half star match with, uh, with, um, Oh my God. With uh, Paige. He had the, he had the Iron Man Lord, match, right. Laredo with with, with Pac. He had Laredo kid stuff. He, all right. Double different, two different promotions, right. D- to do that, to finish that. And, like, those singles matches were incredible. And, like, generally speaking, like, if you're going to do that as a person that's doing, as known as a tag guy or in a tag situation, you have to have incredible singles matches. Not to say that Dax's uh, matches have been great. He's had some great matches, but they're just great. You know, which just sounds like I'm sounding like an asshole, right? Um, they are, like, they're only at a certain level. And, like, I think his best match, his best match singles match with Osprey might be four and a half. I, I, pr- I think I probably give it four and a quarter, but it's in those like, I'm not mad when anyone gives it four and a half or four and a quarter. The rest of none of those matches are that he's had have like, that might be, that, that might be four and a half. I've never had that thought. And like, I've been thinking about like his, his tag stuff. Like obviously he has the, uh, the Aussie open match, which I think is overrated. He has the, um, the second, uh, or he has the two Briscoe matches. I didn't see the first one. Everyone tells me the first one's way better. First I, one's better. I I still thought that the that the second one, while it went too long, was awesome. Right? I get four and a half. Um. So, and he had uh, I mentioned the Young I don't know, Bucks. Bucks match. The Young Bucks match was was awesome as well. Right? One of the best matches of the year. One of the very best matches of the year. So he's had a great year, but his best matches overwhelmingly are all tag matches. That's going to hurt your candidacy. And then you think of like what this like last year with the number of uh people that finished most outstanding from starting where you had um you had Utami, Shuri, and Tam all finished top ten, right? That means there are going to be starters that are going to make it. Like Kamatani and Shuri are going to make it. Julia should make it. I don't know if she will, she should make it. Mayu with this closing stretch she's had in the IWGB uh tournament plus the G- plus the Grand Prix, she's going to be an honorable mission at worst. So that's four right there from stardom. Now, throw in Okada, who's always going to be on there. 
throw in uh, Osprey, who's who's going to win, win more it. likely than not. Throw in people that had sensational G one or had someone had sensational G one like like Ishii, and then had this match. Throw in someone that had a great G one like Shingo, and is like doing God's work with the fucking KO, uh, KOPW uh, thing uh, with Tai Chi or with uh, ELP. Then throw in AEW when you have um, hell. I know he's been gone, he's been hurt, and all that kind of stuff of late, and also like the weird thing. But like Adam Page's first half of the year smokes, uh, smokes uh, Dax, right? Jericho resume smokes Dax. Moxley's resume smokes Dax. Phoenix's resume smokes Dax. Hey, and don't look now, the Young Bucks. Well, they're going to split votes because they're not going to because they're two tag guys. The reason why they never made it or whatever yeah. else. So, like, that's what I mean by the tag guys. Like, think of the year Nick Jackson had last year, right? Right. Didn't make it. And he had singles matches, and his singles matches were better than, or his best singles matches were better than Dax's best singles matches. He didn't make it, right? I don't even know where he even finished it or as far as receiving votes, right? So, I don't, I know he's camp, he's been campaigning hey, for it, and t- they've been getting, they've been a lot of work to do it. I don't know where he's going to get it from. Obviously, like, he'll he'll be ahead of anyone in WWE, from WWE from this year or whatever else. I don't even know. I mean, it'd probably be Walter, I guess. Or it's like Gunter. Do him and Rollins, maybe. But. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It, but, like, they're they're not finishing top 10, those two. Um, yeah. So, like, yeah. Uh, so, I think Dax will finish in front of w, all of WWE. But the rest of the world, like, the top, the elite of stardom, the elite of all the wrestling, the elite of New Japan for wrestling. I mean, you can also throw in someone like Speedball Mike Bailey. He has no shot of finishing the top 10. None. Letting y'all know now, it's going to be a humbling. Like, somebody's going to be upset. And, and, and I know right. they're doing the Danielson match next week. They're going to try to, like, run it up again. But before we get to Dax, I got to talk about Ishii and Jericho here. Like, this was sensational. Yeah. Crowd just completely in on this. Jericho um, sent a tweet out today where he was saying, um, you know, like people always say these things like Chris Jericho doesn't have to do this stuff. He was like, no, I have to do this stuff because I am Jericho and I don't give anything less than 10,000%. Um, I think this was just like, this is a testament to, to this guy who's just been all year, just like running it up. And as far as someone being like, this is his 32nd year in wrestling. I don't like, like Minoru Suzuki is not doing this. Like this isn't like you know like Jericho's not having like just one style match mm-hmm. like or whatever. Like he's like someone that's still putting it all together and like proving like he's so valuable. Like he bladed his fucking chest to to get this thing over. Like bro, that shit was like I was in disbelief watching this. I was like, I can't believe this. And like Jericho versus Ishii won in itself. They're just dropping Tomohiro Ishii in on, on this this holiday show, and it's like you know whatever, like you know this, but, this but, is for the, this the, is for y'all. But the thing you with know? Ishii is like knowing him. What the fuck is Thanksgiving? Right, exactly. He's just like, like bro, like what holiday? Like, like what the fuck is like what the fuck is dynamite, oh, bro? Like, <laughs> I had this thought, and I was saving it for the show, so I'm gonna say it here. When they announced him to face Jericho for the ROH title on AEW, do you? Don't you think backstage Ishii was confused? Wait, the ROH title on AEW in the two different <laughs> things? Wait, he wait the, he owns both of them? He owns both of them. Oh, okay, Rocky, whatever. Like, the, the, that was the check's de- still coming that, through? That conversation definitely happened where he was like confused. Yes. ROH, AEW, what the fuck? What do these two have to do? Each- oh, they're the same. I'm oh, the same person. Same he, runs thing. Show- he runs like He runs all their stuff on... Okay, I didn't know that. He don't watch this shit, bro. Have you ever heard him talk about? Have you ever heard him like uh, the Ishii stuff about WWE? No. He has like he doesn't know any of this stuff. He doesn't know any of, any of this stuff. Like Hulk Hogan, I love it. I love it. Like I don't know none Ultimate of that shit. Warrior, what the fuck is that? Fuck that. Oh, I love it. I I love this match. Um, four and three quarters for me on this. Um, you want four and, and three? Yes. I four and a half. I thought it was awesome. <laughs> like, it was um Bro, yes, Joseph Monticello in the mud. You know, make make another one hour Chris Jericho video. How about it? I don't um, even know clip what that's that. about. Uh just basically it was a one hour teardown video of Chris Jericho. 
over his career or like but recently or what? Over his career. Okay, good luck with that one. Um, yeah, so yeah, man, this match is awesome to me. Like this felt like Jericho's version of like the Danielson Suzuki match from uh, Miami on like the pre whatever the hell that was last year <laughs> late in the year, right? Like it was like his version of Japanese all time legend, Japanese legend, whatever you want to or all time great work, whatever you want to call it or whatever else. I go out here and I wrestle a match that like doesn't necessarily fit the stylings of what I normally do or is different or distinct and like in physical or more physical than normal and like yeah it was a blast it was a blast love the match love the finish of love the beginning of the match where Jericho gives him little fingers Jericho um Ishii then proceeds to beat the living shit out of him Jericho gets the um the uh Walls Jericho then turns it Ishii one tap Ishii then he ends up uh, giving it turn it, uh, turn it into the wall or the lion tamer and then Ishii ta- flicks him off and then taps while flicking him off. Loved it. Sensational. Like, this was a great night. This is one of my for- 10 favorite matches in AEW this year. This is a they great night for, 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 the, for the favorite wrestlers of all time of Rich Ladder, the elite Chris Jericho and Tomohiro Ishii. Like, this is this is a real great night for, for, for all those people. My God. I love this show. Yeah, this this was show, show was great. Crowd. This, was great show. this is one of the, one of the best dynamites uh, that they've ever done. Um, it's definitely one of the best of the year. Definitely, yeah. Like it's pff, incredible. What show. did he get on Cage Match? Um, that would be interesting to see. Um, somebody, please look it up in the comments if you could. Um, but yeah, uh, Sir Sam says Ishii's had this match against hundreds of dudes, but only Jericho thought to blade his chest. Um, <laughs> that, that, and that's the best thing about like what I, I thought about, like what I thought of the match at the time. And I went through and I was like, I wonder, like this match was awesome. I wonder if this is a top 50 Ishii match. And I was like, it's probably not. <laughs> <laughs> Bro, Bro I, I can't stress it enough, like to why like Ishii should be Hall of Famer strictly off of this, like just shows up on a Wednesday and you know, I'm just roll out of bed and just, just do what I do. Like don't matter if you don't know me, you don't need a video package, right. nothing. Just fucking run it up. You know, like, <laughs> Hey, so check this out, Rich. Like this is ranked as the 38th best, uh, 38th as far as best WWE or sorry, AEW shows. Wow. 8. That, that, those point three seven. Those bots got a, it gotta be the bots. I, look, I mean, to be honest, gotta think they've they've had a they've had they, some they have had a lot of shows. For, and it's yeah. been going on now for like four years now at this point, or sorry, uh, 20, 21, 22. Uh, yeah, like three years at this point. So like, yeah, there is. I mean, th- we have been very spoiled by AEW um, in the amount of like great matches they have put on television, and like the way they have avoided like doing mostly stupid stuff on with their storylines or what they, so a lot of people like maybe you know they're up, very invested and if they're not they at least respect what's going on like so yeah like uh, they've done a very good job aw even 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 while thinking like this is a down year comp- compared to the previous standard or what they did um from 2000 from 19 to uh 21 uh, but a lot of that's because of the weird stuff with the brought out thing and, and weird injuries or whatever else they've had to you know um you know, adjust or whatever else, but this like, don't let anyone fool you into thinking like, this is not all, like all of a sudden, like they're as bad as Vince or some stupid shit like that. Like, no, yeah, there's, no. there's a lot of like trash like, going around. They're at the, work. The they're at worst. This, they're still at worst. The second best promotion in the world. They're probably still number one as far yeah. as, qual- as far as like night to night or show to show quality. And it's like, there, there's a lot of like, you know, and this all kind of t- turned up more, um, you know, after post all out, there's a, I, I think they've, they've really like challenged themselves this year and they're just still putting out like, aside from the, like they're putting out shit that you would think would make it clear that a lot of the analysis that's coming in about them, like is clearly ridiculous. Um, but it's always going to be there because they got a lot, they got a lot of enemies, yeah. like they got a lot of enemies. They, you know. <laughs> 
<laughs> you know, you got the the, the reinvigorated uh, Triple H regime who's mobilized the the WWE fan army. You've got your your normal grifters like Eric Bischoff and Mark Madden and Disco Inferno and several other corny sounding motherfuckers. Um, you got your cornet people on the other side, and you know you just never know when they're going to show up. It, um, also, like we're still waiting for Tony Khan hit you back about like the bots before Twitter closes down. So, right. Right. Um, well, yeah, man. Um, <laughs> oh, man. Oh, but uh, and well, also like this holiday, whether you're making a Kroger Simple Truth Turkey for 40 or a Murray's Baked Brie for two, Kroger has fast, fresh delivery and free pickup so you can make holiday meals that bring you all together to create memories that last. Kroger, fresh for everyone. Free pickup on orders of $35 or more. Restrictions may apply. Get more ways to save at the Buy 5 or More Save $1 each sale. Just buy five or more participating items and save a dollar each with card. Kroger, fresh for everyone. Call of Duty Modern Warfare is here, and so is Mountain Dew. Roger that. Now you can unlock in-game rewards like only Dew can. Wait, what rewards? A Dew Operator skin. Man, I love Operator skins. Dual double XP, and even Call of Duty points. You're kidding me. Double XP and Call of Duty points? This is incredible. I can't believe it. This Soldier. Get a hold of yourself. Oh, roger that. Look for specially marked packaging and visit mtndugaming.com for details and restrictions. Open to U.S. residents 17 plus. Call of Duty points available on 12 and 24 bets and free 20 and 23. By giving, people will be helping Nationwide Children's Hospital find cures, brighten patients' holidays, and people will be able to support their neighbors when they need it most. When they donate, they will activate in real time a butterfly-inspired light show for patients this holiday season. They will add holiday cheer to the lives of kids who really need a reason to smile. No one wants to think about their child being sick, but should that day come, the donation they make this year could help the care their child could need in the future. Please give now at nationwidechildrens.org slash give. It feels like these dynamites are almost like, we've got to have a great dynamite because, like, we ain't doing shit for Rampage. <laughs> There's also that part. Like, Ramp- bro, I watched that Rampage. This is our first time I watched Rampage in, like, two and a half months. And when I, t- when I watched it, I was like, outside of the FTR and uh, Top Flight match, which, like, incredible pacing. But uh, kind of sloppy at points, but incredible pacing. Uh, but it felt like, oh, this is oh, this is dark. It felt like I was watching dark, except it wasn't dark. Um, yeah, man. Uh, do you want to go through it, or what do you want to do? Yeah, we had uh, FCR and Top Flight in the opener. Uh, this is a solid match. Um, nothing blow away. Nothing to to, to stop you traffic for or anything but um i think they have i I probably push back yeah i I would probably say like the last couple weeks of rampage has actually been better than this one Mm -hmm. uh and like i said like they've been doing like you know last week they had like jun akiyama on there and shit and yeah like you know they do like certain things to to pop uh you know did i watch that rampage last week i think you only watched the main event i think yeah no, no, no! You watched it live with me, I think. I did watch um, it live because I wanted to see Junior Junior Akiyama in, in to catch the back. That's what, yeah. I, so I did watch that. I, I forgot that I watched it. I'm treating a, I'm treating Rampage like I was treating Raw that one year. I was like, hey man, what happened on this one January 2017? I think or July 2017. James, me, you went to that one <laughs> in person. Oh, I forgot. <laughs> man, it's a lot of wrestling, man. I'm getting old. I'm 35. It's, it's all starting to go. It's all just starting to. It's all starting to go. Um. So, uh, and this was for the ROH uh, World Tag Team Titles. Uh, FTR retained. Um. So they got to be on television. You know, defend their belts. Yeah. You know. Uh. Did, did the people that were saying like they they weren't like that they were like putting Dax on every week, but not putting on Dax in cash, but like it's some weird conspiracy to like stop. The, the mighty mighty FTR like those people were like did that did that calm them down or no, no well, actually no, no because like Dax whipped up some more bullshit this week on Twitter I forgot about that yep um yeah man great Just, wrestler he, he's got to stop he got to log out I don't know what he's doing like to what end does it serve you <sighs> um you you want to remind the people what what he uh. 
what he did this I time. I, it's always something, man. It's always something. Like it's always something annoying. And I feel like we were kind of talking about this before it kind of became this popular thing to pay attention to. And it was just like, well, I, I think I think the tipping point was for people that it, it got on more people's radar was after like the cornet thing mm-hmm. uh, at the one press conference because it was like in front of Tony Khan because it was like, wait a second, this guy like sends people out to say fucked up things about like the elite, the elite, this is all elite wrestling, and you're like saying that you know they're he's entitled to have whatever his penis because he's Jim Cornette is like, nah, man, if your opinion's fucked up or terrible or homophobic like maybe you sh- maybe we shouldn't give a fuck what you have to say um yeah so i'm, I'm scrolling through um get your merch get your merch donate to james for for his japan <laughs> trip i'd have to look through uh it was um yeah, he was mostly like, plugging like the the Danielson match that he set up on at the end of our later oh. on in Rampage, and then he moved. It was something else. It, there, there was something where he was going to. I, I think I remember he was talking about he was going to stream um, some matches that he had like six years ago on the day of Full Gear. That's what it was. That's what it was. Um, and it was like, nah, little bro, we watching Full Gear tonight. Like the the world is doing this just because he wasn't on the show. He couldn't kind of. You know, he's doing his bullshit on Twitter and it was just like, what the fuck, man? Like, I like I like, like what are you doing? Like, in you know, people have uh, there was a report that said is uh, the FTR's contracts with AEW may be up in April 2023. Um, I hope that those gentlemen find the best offer for their lives and their careers and their family. Uh, most importantly, yes. Yes. How could we forget uh, Dex's family? They tell us every promo um so hopefully you know you know hopefully you know if they're you know done appearing at aw i i you know i could think of a, a way to um you know have their final match in a promotion you know i could i could i could easily see some some you know i, I got a real nasty agenda um you know to, to unleash i think y'all know what it is so um uh, you know, if you listen to One Nation Real long enough, I don't even have to say it. But um, after that, we got Jericho with the mic, um, and Claudio Castagnoli cuts a h- horrible promo. Um, he got wetted. <laughs> yeah, he got wetted. Yeah, uh, shots out of Bills Mafia. Uh, I- I'm completely stealing the agenda from him uh, on this one. So, um, yeah, you know, FTR Young Bucks, two out of three falls, Young Bucks sweep. <laughs> Um, they they basically set up a uh, Claudio versus a uh, Jericho match for final battle. I'm shocked Jericho did not find a way to get off the belt before the pay per view. Um, I, I feel like politically he would try to do that as to not you know be stuck with the the the, the uh, responsibility of having to draw in the middle of the afternoon with this title because that show is going to be on at four o'clock. So, so you so you thought he was gonna do the Hogan uh W or, or TNT playoff thing? You know, we can drop this belt beforehand, mm. you know, this, and whatever, but uh he's they're gonna take the challenge. So um Well, I mean I don't okay, because Ring of Honor is I don't know how like the Ring of Honor thing worked as far as like the word of mouth from the first Briscoe's um FTR match from like WrestleMania weekend. But like maybe they have a thing where it's like we can run it any time. It doesn't matter. People will catch well, people will catch it like not live. Maybe they have a huge thing of not live. Who knows? Because like uh, what was the paper they had the? Um, I, I think they're specifically going at four to avoid UFC. So they are trying to get their own live stuff to make sure you know they don't they don't have to miss you know the the eight o'clock uh, start due well, to UFC. I mean, Okay, I didn't know there was UFC that day. I didn't know that. So I, I, I guess, and maybe it's like we don't want to go any further in because uh, uh, in, into the into like the seventeenth or whatever. I don't know. Maybe just maybe maybe you're right. I, I you know, so but I, I think it'll still be successful for like the for the AEW era of or the Tony Khan era of Ring Honor. I think it'll still be a successful pay per view by the standards yeah. of what it's done. Because like, I'll it's watch, by I'll, far the I'm biggest. Watch it. 
Yeah, it's the biggest star power that they've had, like in a main event. Like, in, yeah, you know, no disrespect to FDR and the Briscoes, but um, you know, you got Chris Jericho and Casanova, and uh, the step on this match is if Claudio loses, he has to join the Jericho Appreciation Society. So I could imagine him and Hager reunited. That might be kind of, I mean, funny. I expect it because they got to figure out how to dissolve this thing now. Yeah, the the what combat club like right. like tied all that shit to Regal can't can't be trusting Regal, you know. I had vision, you know. Um, but uh, <laughs> after that, we got Anthony Henry and Darby Allen in an FIP offer match. Um, and Darby Allen defeats his his old foe um, here. Yeah, they said that like, their career record, the five matches, and Darby has the advantage at uh, at uh, three and two. And I was like, it's about to be four and two. <laughs> There's not a chance in hell. And I was, and I thought to myself, I was also like, I see Anthony Henry like once or twice, and I think he's, I think he's good, but I don't know how good. I still don't know how good he actually is, um, even from this match. Uh, but I was surprised that like uh, they hear that like. Darby was going whatever. Maybe it was still like a big thing about his size or whatever else. And, you know, because I, you know, it's obviously a huge thing with him with Prump who ran some people were like making super competitive. So, um, but anyway, like I thought it was a fun match for what it was. Um, the crowd didn't seem too into it except for when Darby had the advantage. Yep. Um, we had uh, Tony Storm in a backstage interview, two black eyes on her. Uh, she said if uh, Jamie Hader can be happy with the way she won the title, then that's how it is. She never held the championship like it was in term. And she said she's going to come back for what is hers. And it's through yeah. um, like, like everything else surrounding the interim championship and the women's title. This just sent Twitter into either w- when something's bad, it's way too bad. Or if something's like good, it's way too good. Like mm-hmm. it's there's no. There's no sense of balance here. Yeah, I, I um the word of mouth I saw on this on Twitter was that like this is like some some breakout promo for for Tony Storm, and like I finally saw it and I was like it's just good. Uh, I don't know. It was maybe it was the black eyes. Maybe maybe people like saying that. I mean, you know, this is a W. The fans love they, they love themselves some blood. So maybe it was that idea of like, cause she didn't make the face like chicks, like she didn't have like this face as if she looked almost like, um, but she was still suffering from like, say almost like, like effects from the, from the, um, nose thing or whatever else. So, I mean, it was, I thought it was good, but I didn't like, I didn't see what everyone else saw as far as it being like some breakthrough thing. I thought, thought it was a good promo and like raised great points about like how, it it's boggles the mind that people were like so happy for Jamie and is like, she, but she didn't really win because her friends came out at the end of the of a good ass match and like just fucking cheated over and over and over again. And she won and she didn't know it and whatever. Ugh. It's yeah. More, more of the, uh, of the, the heels and you know, it's, it's a lot, man. This this is a disease night now. Cause like, I, I think if you're going to be a heel and you're a heel that gets cheered, right? I think what I look for is like, all right, are you trying to play the role at least? Like when it's time, are you like bumping and feeding for these people? Are you showing ass a little bit? Are you like doing these things to still kind of like show, hey, I'm not trying to like swallow the baby face whole. Like, and if you're not doing that, that's when I'm like looking at it like, okay, this shit's all fucked up. So um, after that, <clears throat> Athena got asked what she's supposed to do. Uh, She was backstage with DDP's daughter. I thought she was going to spark her. I think she should have. Of course, you know, you guys know the agenda that I have going on. And AW has been putting it to use on Dark. Uh, She whooped the hell out of Laney Luck. I think she needs to follow up on the Aubrey thing and and go up to Aubrey like, like, you know, call these matches, you know, the right way or else it's going to be more where that came from. You know, uh, when is the Athena five minute white girl challenge? When are we going to do it? Line it up. They, they let Serena Deeb do it, damn near. Let's get the real going like this. When's the last time we've seen Serena <laughs> Deeb? Like, she made the comeback at, like, for, like, two weeks, and then she was gone. Like, was that really just only to set up the Mercedes Martinez match? I think so, yeah. Okay. Um, uh, Or she, no, no, she was uh, around during the, the Arthur Ashe show, too, in that uh, four-way, if That's I'm not right. mistaken. Okay, okay so it's um, more recent than I thought. Okay. 
so she basically calls out Mercedes Martinez, ROH women's title. So mm, they, they don't got it all the right way. But, um, you know, after that, we I got. Mean, I mean, the match still fits a different agenda that, that, that seems that Tony Khan has going on when it comes man, to Man, all over this, this promotion. I appreciate it. Um, and then as the next match was about to start, the Bunny and Penelope Ford came out. Shouts out to the Bunny. Um, and they uh, basically, uh, she distracted, uh, they distracted Hikaru Shida to allow her opponent, Queen Aminata, to blindside her. And um, we got Hikaru Shida versus Queen Aminata. Queen Aminata has been in and out of AW over the last year and a half or so. She's been working her way through the indies. Great look. Um, still trying to, you know, great presence kind of about her. And, um, you know, she'll continue to, I think there's somebody they should look at on bringing in um, more regularly. Um, any thoughts on this match, James? Um, like what I saw the queen. Um, I, I, you know, it was good to see Sheeta liked her new gear, like uh, Amanada's gear as well. Um, and like, obviously it was, you know, play off the kid. She went off a distraction. Couldn't do it. Uh, baby face, you know, quickly gets back on track and gets the win. Um, yeah, uh, it was for what it was going for. It did, it did its job. Um, obviously, like I've I've missed Sheeta in, in AEW this year. Um, even with the you know a couple of appearances here and there, same for Riho. Um, but yeah, um, interesting to see where this goes. Sheeta and Riho weren't doing all this crying and crazy shit. They weren't. <laughs> they were just wrestling and then <laughs> getting going to the back. Look, and, and getting you know harassed online, you know yeah, that part too. Yeah. So up next, we got a trios match: John Silver, Alex Reynolds, um, and Ten against uh, Bush or the the Butcher and the Blade and Roosh. Yes. Um, and this turned out to be the uh, oh Queen Eminata is headed to Marvelous on December fourth. Ah, okay. Um, so this one ended up, you know, uh, with Roosh, Butcher, and the Blade getting the win. This one, uh, featured 10 turning on John Silver and the rest of the Dark Order, and then turning on negative one. Um, you know, this wasn't the way I thought 10 would unmask, but this was excellent uh as far as the angle they did uh Rouge has like the perfect temperament for all this it's just like he just knows how to be a badass that's conniving and you know hyping his man up essentially and um you know we're gonna get a chance Ten's gonna get a chance to sink or swim now he has no nothing holding him back anymore as far as being in the the dark order gimmick we're gonna see it uh hope he's ready but this angle was excellent. Left this little kid sitting there with the mask, and he was just hurt. His mom was playing it up on Twitter, kind of, kind of following up on it, calling did, Vance. He saying he wasn't shit. Did you see what shit. Vance said in response? I did not. Okay, so she's. Uh, I think it's Amanda. Amanda Huber said something along the lines of like he would just be so. Basically, like he, you know, you let him down, you be disappointed, and he was like, I, I, I think that. I think he said some lines like, I think that that he that I can still make him proud doing it this way. I was like, it's interesting. This is your take on it. Mm-hmm. As far as like or no, I think I can show what, what he believe what he saw in me. I think that's what he said. So like that's closer to what he said. And I was like, Okay. Because like when he turned on him, like he was doing like this is hilarious and he was doing the you know, and I was like, Oh, he's laying this on thick. Um, and then, like, when, you know, he took off that mask, he handed it to him, <laughs> threw it right in front of the negative one, negative one, picked that shit up and cried until, like, oh. And I already I already heard that he turned. Bro, it was crazy it. in real when time. When I watched it, it, I was like, oh, they, 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 they really, they, when they brought negative one, I was like, oh, no, they didn't. And they did it. And I was like, that's a nice touch. They went all the way with it. So, um, it's weird. Like, it seems like how many like remember Dark Order is it will never break up. Dark yeah. Order is forever, bro. Yeah. We call it that shit. Yeah. So, how many more uh, 
like factions, makeshift factions, will like the Butcher and the Blade end up in uh, as far as being goons uh, for for heels? How many more do you think? Oh, they getting they getting passed around like a blunt. That's why I'm getting that. Like, how how what number can we get this to? Wow, Black Saber Jr. says they leaving the Dark Order like the post ninety eight Bulls. Wow. Oh shit. Oh, wow. Wow. That's oh. a great one. Oh man. Oh, like man. who? Bro, they li- they leaving Silver and Reynolds out there like Tony Kukoc and um. Holy shit. I, I don't know who else. Joe Bushler. That's. Sir Sam, he wants to see a Silver versus uh ten match. Yeah, I, I would go it. with that. Yeah. I mean, I've watched Silver in most things. Um, yeah, but yeah, this is a, this is an excellent angle. You want to see someone getting some heat, especially heat on kids, which is always good in wrestling. Like this <laughs> harken back to Sasha Banks and what she did to, um, uh, Izzy and, and ripping off her, uh, her joint. It's almost like you don't go there with kids. And when you do, there's a big, you know, uh, reaction to it. Negative one is very beloved amongst the, uh, AW fan base. And, um, you know, it leaves, it leaves a little story for negative one to, uh, uh, you know, one day possibly pay off. So uh, I think we'll all be watching that because as James mentioned, negative one is getting bigger every time we see him. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, it. We'll see how this goes. We'll see how long it lasts and all that kind of stuff. Um, man. Um, is this so, the end of the Dark Order? Like, is, is it over? I know they still got Uno and they got Silver and Reynolds. It's a trio now, it ain't looking good. It ain't, it ain't. Um, so hopefully, hopefully, they figure something out. And so, um, you know, the, Sir Sam says uh, there will be a comeback one day down the line. So, uh, yeah, I, I could see that. So, I think people will always pop for it. So, yeah. Um, but James, I guess there's only one thing left to do. Hit the music. Okay, so uh, I think on maybe like Friday or Saturday, I told Rich, you know, I'm going to watch like uh, the three stardom shows that are up for tag league uh since um i think before the the weekend before we got to uh the pay-per-view for uh gold rush and also historic crossover and um the 20 uh, the october 20 not october november 23rd show that was also tag league i think it was a cork hall show and i told i was gonna watch that watch those i was gonna watch stardom uh in showcase volume three that was on saturday night and I was going to watch Survivor Series. Um, James, can I interrupt you with one thing? Yeah. Young Bucks bio update. They are aware of the memes, of the NBA memes. <laughs> the bio says Matt Jackson's legacy is on the line. Game three. I fucking love these guys. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. <laughs> yeah, so... Uh, <laughs> Legacies on the line. They're just, it's ridiculous. I love it. And at least they're at least they're like you know acknowledging the nonsense that's going on. Around. Like I don't know what I don't know what like maybe it's the TNT connection. Maybe like is bro, where maybe like, people like start picking up like the 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 you know the bro the playoff is, series NBA no, thing. Maybe no, bro. This is a lot smaller than that. This is grassroots. This is myself. This is like. uh uh, big AO. This is uh, Keem wins again. This is uh, Chris O'Bread. A lot of Russell Pierce people and us all just putting these jokes out over and over and over and, and this shit spiraling out the, uh, this week. Sure, but but what I mean is by that is like we weren't doing this for Booker T and Benoit, right? Like uh, we weren't doing this for Sheamus and Cesaro. Like uh, I think it's the part where like they're on Turner, like the connection, like even on a subconscious level, like that might be playing in your mind. Maybe. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, that's all I was going as far as that. Like, I think this is like, I think it's a neat, like kind of, I don't know, ser- not serendipity. I don't know the word, but like, I think it's kind of like a neat connection. Um, so as I said, like 
three Stardom Tag League shows were up on the on the on the uh, Stardom World. I had uh, the Stardom Showcase to watch. I also had Survivor Series to watch. Uh, I told Rich on like Saturday or Friday I was going to watch all of it, and let, let's we'll see how this goes. Um, we may have to kick to Tuesday. Well, we kicked to Tuesday, and the only thing I watched was Stardom in or Stardom in Showcase. I did not watch any Tag League stuff. Star- Tag League final is this weekend. Sorry, Damn. I have nothing for you. I have nothing. Yes, I have boy, no updates to tell you who's in the, in the um, driver's seat. None of that. Sorry, we want. I'm gonna find out when y'all do. So uh, I'll recap you next week or whatever else, whenever or uh, whenever the shows actually come out. So sorry. Um, but what were you gonna say, Rich? I was gonna say James Boy turns 35 and then is like, "Fuck it, it's for the goofiness." <laughs> yeah. Right. Uh, so. Um, Stardom Showcase, uh, for those that don't know, uh, Stardom Showcase is a series of shows that Stardom does. Um, uh, also, another series is called um, New Blood. New Blood is basically like a young girl showcase showcase uh, series where they have the wrestlers that are under a certain age or a certain number of um, years in the ring. And they have matches with other wrestlers of similar ages and experience levels from around the, the Joshi landscape. Um, about once every six weeks, starting with showcase is they basically do goofy, funny comedy matches or hardcore matches, um, on a card every six weeks. Um, and these shows do well, uh, relatively speaking, um, as far as like attendance and all that kind of stuff. Um, but the main thing is, like, I, I think it is a lot of people like after Bushi Road po- purchase was like, Hey, we miss kind of like the golden week kind of goofiness and stuff, whatever else. Can we get some of that kind of that kind of stuff and this I, is I, I, all of it. I, I do like the idea. They need to bring back the, the cost, the costume change battle Royal. I agree. I agree. Um, that's, that, that's the only thing I really miss. Like them, them like running the ropes and timing it to, to, to advance to the next thing or them doing like uh blindfolded, uh, um, sword, f- sword fights with inflatable swords. Like, I think, I think you want to do the, je- the, the rock, paper, scissors tournament. Cool. But that's, that's it. Like, Rock Paper Scissors tournament in um, when they dress up in goofy outfits, like they have like Kyrie dressed as a fucking banana, like stuff like that. Fine, uh, but some of the stuff was like just too goofy. Um, but anyway, so starting the showcase, all, the first match on this show was actually a tag league match. It was uh, Nanai and You versus uh, Ida and um, Hannon. Uh, I thought it was a good match. Like uh, you have. <laughs> You basically have you start the match. You have Hannon and Saya try to break down um, and, and two on one attack you. You with her side just it's hard to move. Just won't go for stuff. And then eventually they uh, they use the number of games to get advantage. Um, you then takes on Ida. It's a battle of chops. Uh, Ida is getting lit up, and then then I gets in against Hannon. She's beating Hannon's ass until Hannon gets a rolling arm bar. Um, then I makes ropes, tags in Ida. Ida comes off the top rope and, uh, hits a diving, or, or sorry, double axe on Ida's, or sorry, on, uh, Nanai's arm. Nanai is selling an arm for the rest of the match. Um, and then Nanai, uh, and you basically put them away even while struggling with, um, the bad arm Nanai has. Um, and they end up getting the win. Um, I forgot what the finish was, but Nanai is a putting away Ida. Um, good match. Uh, and next, then you get the start of the official wackiness. You end up getting a, a four way false count anywhere match between Kaguma and Azumi, who have like this is like their series of matches. This is the third starting the showcase. Kaguma and Azumi are always in a four way false count anywhere match. Uh, I like this the least of the ones they've done, um, but it was still good nonetheless. Uh, this one had uh, Starlight Kid and uh, Ram Kaicho in it, and. I guess it's because it's World World Cup this weekend. Um, Huma comes down to the ring. She she's wearing a soccer jersey. She hands soccer jerseys to Kid, Ram, and um, and Azumi. They all put them on. Um, Azumi's willing to put her on just fine. Like I'm cool with it. I'm with all the shenanigans you do. And then uh, Ram and Starlight Kid do not want to put them on. Huma threw the shirts over their he- over their heads and then pulled her arms out the so- out of the uh, holes and they were just on magically. And then they proceed to use soccer balls and like these inflatable, like 
I can't even explain what they are. These inflatable things are gigantic. They're bouncing off each other. And then they end up outside the ring. And there's a giant inflatable goal. Uh, Kagumo Orozumi gets the, uh, I'm going to say the two hills. They are two hills. Kid and Ram, and Ram inside of the inflatable thing. They're stuck together. And then, like, they're in front of the goal. And then, like, Azumi and Kaguma start using soccer balls to try to kick at them and, and also the miss of them, but it goes to the goal and everything else. It's just, it's just a, just a, just a, just a, a lot. It's a lot. Um, match is okay. Um, but <laughs> it's just so goofy. It's just so goofy and nonsense. At the end, Kakuma ends up catching Azumi with a, uh, and then once they get back to the ring, ends up catching Azumi with a Kuma roll and gets to win. Um, and then the hills, they basically, uh, leave together um and then azumi and, and kaguma they they go up the ramp and celebrate another a, another <laughs> another goofy four count for or four way false carry were match um hey man, shouts out to the bear and bear day oh god <laughs> bear meat day <laughs> go to her twitter i'm not explaining the joke google translation is ridiculous um so the next match after I just mentioned a uh, four away, that was ridiculous. Here's another one. I don't know what the name of it is, but I'm basically going to uh, call it what it was. This was a four way shampoo match. Um, it had Kamatani, Lady C, Kogo, and uh, and Hameka. And basically, the winner of the match was going to uh, get like a salon day and get their get their hair done up really nice. And but in this match, you were allowed to. Um, you were allowed to use shampoo, um, if you will, on, on an opponent if need be. So, in the middle of the ring was like a kiddie pool, like a like a a kiddie pool. There were like water pump things in the ring, and then there were also like bottles of shampoo, and like there were sight gags, like. Uh, they were putting shampoo and mousse and conditioner in their hair and like doing like the alfalfa spike thing in the middle on Kamatani. Um, they're all messing up each other's hair. Um, there's a, there's like hair nets or whatever else and hair ties and all types of stuff. At some, at one point they get, they get senior ref Daichi and they, they put product in his hair. Um, there's a point where Momo gets an advantage on someone she has no business getting advantage on and the, the, the middle of the floor is wet, and then, like, she goes to charge the person that she should put in the ropes for, to go for a 619, and she slips and falls on purpose um, uh, on in the middle of the mat. Basically, at the end, I, I had to go to my notes to remember what the finish of this thing was. Um, so, bear you. with me. Um, so, <laughs> at the end... <laughs> So the end of this match was that uh, I didn't even write down the end of the match. Lady C won. Sorry, <laughs> sorry. I, I don't even remember what happened. Lady C just won. I think she. I'm pretty sure she pinned uh, uh, Kogo. Uh, and then at the end, after like uh, after Hameka and Kamatani were like kind of left out of the of the finish of the match, they cut back to them in like basically like both of their hair is like completely wet and like put up in a gigantic spike in the middle and they're like taking pit photos because they both spiked each other's hair up with shampoo product. Uh, and then Lady C <clears throat> one and she walked off to the back. Uh, so then, <laughs> then you get a good match that was fucking preposterous. You get a trios judo jacket match. So as you know, Rich, so Bret Hart may have been able to offer some strategy in this. Maybe. Uh, so as you know, Rich, there are lots of, uh, there are about a half dozen or more, uh, judokas in stardom between the Hannon sisters, Mirai, uh, Utami and Micah, right? Mm -hmm. So, and then you have some people come in like you, for example. So you're thinking, okay, all right. It makes some, it makes some sense. So this match was. Serious as Judoka Micah. Uh, actually, I'll, I'll say that I'll say that team for for, for, for last. But uh, you have the you have Utami Hashishta, you have Mirai, and you have Hina, one of the one of the Hannon uh, twins. 
And then on the other team is Mirai, obviously Judoka, Hanan, JK Fighter, Judoka, and Mayu Iwatani. <laughs> I saw that picture. She thinks she's on the team. I remember when I first saw the thing, I was like, she does I don't recall this. I never heard about this. Maybe like maybe she does know how to maybe she 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 started this recently. I don't know. I have no idea. Okay, so this match starts. Or let before we get to the match. Micah comes down, first person out, comes down. She has the blue gi on, she has the blue pants on. No games. She, no games, not fucking around. Dead ass serious. Then Hannah comes out. Hannah has her gi on, has her jacket on with the belt. Um, she's a brown belt. Mike is a black belt. Um, and, but she has shorts on, like basketball shorts, right? Then Mayu comes out. Also, uh, so that team, the, the Micah, Hannon, Mayu team is are all blue jackets, right? Mayu comes out with her blue jacket, and she has a fucking orange belt. Look, I... <laughs> I don't know that I don't know the judo belt reggae system, but I know brown. But I know in most I know in most systems, right? I red, have the internet. Look, red, black, and brown normally mean you a bad motherfucker or you are highly skilled and you have you put years into the craft, right? So <laughs> I saw that orange. I was like, "What? I don't know what this is." Okay, so. Um, the order of the judo belts first, um, uh, is the red belt. Then there's orange or excuse me, red, excuse me, red, yellow, orange, green, blue, and then brown. Okay. So, so my base has been doing this for like maybe nine months. Yeah. Probably like nine months. Right. Yeah. All right. But we talk about motherfuckers that all have brown and black belts. (laughs) So, so. Out comes uh, the white jacket team, Utami, black belt. Um, Hina, I think a brown belt. Mirai, black belt with stripes on it. Right? With, you know, like multiple degrees, right? Yeah. So they start with Utami and, and Micah naturally. They, they Half their matches start with them trying to judo trip each other before they get on to the, to the pro wrestling. And it's always, they always have great matches. So, um, so it's a, it, it's a, it's a not, it's basically like most judo matches where like it's to a certain point count after certain trips and falls, right. And takedowns. So I think, so the number was to five at the time. Um, I think it was to five. So, um, Mariah and Utami start. Mariah ends up, up two uh, one on Utami. They tag out. I, I forgot the order of it. I think they started with Hannon and Hina, I think. But uh, after that, it goes to Mirai and Mayu. And <laughs> when I tell you, <laughs> I don't know if it's for play. I don't know if it was serious. I don't know. It's probably for entertainment because Mayu's a genius. Mayu, like she didn't know what the fuck she was doing. <laughs> Like my my because like, look, I've seen a little bit of like uh, of judo in the Olympics or whatever else, right? Like, so I can I understand I know what the stands are and like, how you kind of keep space before you get to the jacket stuff and uh, the grip and you know, how you avoid trips and that kind of stuff. I'm I'm not just picking up any of that, right? Except for knowing that like that's a te- that's a technique. So Mariah comes in there in the middle of the ring, you know, hands up trying to grab, trying to get to a, trying to get to a sleeve or whatever else. And Mayu the whole time is like arms out like she's trying to grab, but bit over, like over bit at the bent at the waist instead of the knees to try to like not get tripped. But like she but in their position, she has no fucking power whatsoever to if even if she were to grab a sleeve, she couldn't do nothing with it because she she has she, she doesn't have any weight. Plus, there's weight divisions in judo for a reason. <laughs> And Mariah has like at least twenty five pounds on, on Mayu, and it just looks fucking ridiculous. And like after after a couple of second, a couple of like passes around, Mariah's had enough and, gr- and goes to grab Mayu and my and goes to like, give her a judo throw, uh, Ronda Rousey style. 
and by the grace of God, Mayu is able to stay stuck on to Mariah's back long to where it's like when she gets flipped over eventually she lands on her feet and is able to like sprawl back around to the middle and gets out gets out of it or, uh, and then tries and then gets out of it by like just turning into a wrestling match from there. Like mm-hmm. she starts she starts running the ropes, starts like giving uh spin, spinning back kick, all that shit. Like it just turned like, from that point forward, it went from like a pro wrestling match that is simulating uh, tag matches in uh, a judo competition into fuck that it's a wrestling match now and they just turn into a wrestling match from there um, for the most part um, and then so basically everyone like the people that were tag team together so Utami and, and uh, Micah Mirai and Mayu Hina and Hannon they basically go around the loop again to in matchups and they get back to uh they get back to and the score gets closer at, uh, by that point in time. They get back into Mirai and uh, Mayu, and Mayu lands like the lucky, like on purpose, like the luckiest fucking takedown on Mirai. Mirai's like can't believe that she got taken down by this fucking orange belt. <laughs> um, yeah, man, like it was just hilarious because of Mayu, and uh, like I would say watch it because it, it, it one is it, it's entertaining for even all the judo all the judo stuff. And like it, it was like good tag wrestling, and it was hilarious because Mayu was like, she doesn't know what the fuck she's doing compared to these other five. Uh, but at the end, um, Micah ends up getting a uh, gets in there, and at the end with Hina, um, Hina looks like she's giving uh, my 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 Micah a problem. Micah slips around, gets to her back, and gets a sleeper, and then uh, Hina taps out. Uh, so yeah, it was it was a fun match, and like. As this happened, as the finish happening, everyone's outside the ring. Everyone's on out on the floor. They cut back. Mayu has taken. I think it was. Uta- uh, I think it was Utami's black belt. She takes Utami's black belt, ha- throws the orange belt to one of them, and she puts on Utami's fucking black belt. <laughs> This is so it's so stupid. She made it work. Uh, they all made it work. It was a really fun match. Like I might have to give this like three and a half stars. <laughs> <laughs> um. So uh, then after this, you have the returning Natsu Samire, um, tagging with Hazuki versus Natsuko Tora in Saki. Now they set this up on a video package where um Rossi. No, well, let me back go back even further. Natsu owns a bar in in Tokyo. Uh, I believe it's Tokyo. Um, so Rossi invites Nasako and um, Saki to the bar. They don't know who owns it, and all of a sudden the camera pans to Nasako or Natsu, Natsu, like walking out the back. And keep in mind, like uh, she hasn't wrestled in Stardom since the October third, two thousand twenty pay per view. Like she fucked up her shoulder, and that's when mm-hmm. and basically since then she returned to wrestling this year with the Nomads thing, right? So. <laughs> they see her. She sees them. It's been it, you were supposed to play it as it's been no t- long time, no see, no contact, anything. Saki and Nasco beat her ass in her own building, and then and, and then start throwing bottles and fucking up the place, and then leave. So um, I guess Nasco, because because of, of the old Oedo type connection, calls up Hazuki, and they, that's how you get the tag match. So. Um, this match is all right. Like you're kind of like uh, it's it is not is a step of a clear step down for the previous match. Um, but like they they is not too bad. She does her spot. She does her comedy stuff. They is also no DQ. So like they're breaking bottles over their, like with the sugar glass. They're breaking bottles over each other's heads and everything. And like Hazuki is like in the like her retirement gear from when she uh retired in 2019. So like uh at the end, um. <sighs> Stars uh, has like Hazuki's back. Oedotai clearly has uh, Oedotai's back. Um, Natsu, Natsuko and um, Saki. So like there's interference. The baby faces clear up the inter- interference. And then there's too many run-ins in the ma- and the rep at the end like just throws out the match. No the contest. is too much bullshit in this like hardcore no DQ match. Whatever. I don't know. He threw it out. Natsuko um tells Natsu like you're not you're not welcome in Oedo Tai. We're still mad or whatever else. That's fine. So then Azuki uh more or less says like I don't know what you want to do, but like they're I don't know what you want to do. Uh and then Natsu Natsu she like 
she bashes a ball over Hazuki, lays her out, and then tells Hazuki, like, I'm going to come back to stardom, but only, but I'm not going to be in stars. I'm not going to be in no Oedo Tai. I'm going to be a freelancer. So, like, Natsu will return to stardom as a freelancer, and we'll see where that goes. Um, uh, but match, uh, probably like two and three quarters, something like that. Um, Oof. yeah. Uh, so, then you get <laughs> a hardcore match between Cosmic Angels and Prominence. Tam, Poi, and Unagi returning, um, for the first time since the end of the Grand Prix, versus Suzu, um, Risa, and, uh, Kurumi. Um, I, this match was very good. This match was very good. Like, I, three and three quarters, something like that. Um, Prominence comes out. Reese is in the hardcore gear. Um, you know, they, they come down with some of their weapons. Cosmic Angels comes down. They, <laughs> they have jumpsuits that were clearly white jumpsuits that they tie dyed. And then they and then they painted their names on the back or on the legs. Like uh Poi put Poi on the back of hers, Tam put Tam on the back of hers, Unagi put Uno on one of the legs of, of it. Uh and then like at the start of the match, Cosmic Angels proceeds to like beat Prominence's ass and do all this cutesy stuff until eventually Prominence turns the tables. Um you get to a section of the match where it is Tam and Risa, and I don't think you saw their uh, their Grand Prix match, but it was one of the best matches of the tournament. Um, I gave it four and a quarter. And, like, they just pick up where they left off, where, like, Risa get, goes to... Uh, Cosmic Angels has the advantage for a certain amount of time. They set up a table and put it on the floor, and, like, Tam puts Risa on the table and is about to go to the top rope and jump off. Prominence cuts it off, cuts it off. Risa grabs Tam, gets up on the apron, air raid crashes Tam off the apron through the table. Um, then uh there's a ladder. They put the ladder on the floor, or sorry, on the on the uh mat. It looks like Risa's about to slam Tam on it. Tam gets be- ducks behind her and then Tiger suplexes her on the fucking ladder. Um, and then, and that was, and that's how they tag out. That's how they tag out to get in, uh, I think Suzu in Unagi. Um, and then, but they said in, um, for the finish, Suzu Germans Unagi onto, uh, bridging Germans her onto a pile of of chairs for the win. Um, very fun match. Uh, if you have time, I I would check it out. Um, I probably, I would say like that match in the, uh, judo jacket match would be two matches to check out. Um, and then, uh, the main event is Donald Mondo, Tekla, Julia, and, um, uh, Mai versus Nanai, you, and a Grim Reaper in a casket match, a trio's casket match. Rich. They did a Grim Reaper gimmick and they didn't reveal who it was. Why? Like they put the Grim Reaper skull on his person, right? They, Julia, like, in, like, the first two minutes of the match, rips off the mask, or rips off the, the skull, it's someone with a mask underneath, and then they continue to wrestle. That's um, funny. Yeah, yeah, it was, like, some Dos Carol shit. <laughs> Dos Carol shit. Um, so, this match is a lot based on, like, you just being, just using the size advantage, and I and Julia being the shit out of each other, um, and then, like, trying, me, the rest of the match, trying to figure out who in the fuck is this Grim Reaper person? I, I can't tell for life of me. I'm sure someone knows who it is based off their, their shoes or whatever else, but I couldn't tell who it was. Um, ultimately, uh, there was one casket by the ringside. They did a spot where they sent you over the top rope and she fell on the, uh, on the casket. The casket broke apart. There's a, uh, there's a second casket, like, towards the ramp or, to- or towards the back. Julia and Nanai brawl towards that casket, spotlights on the casket. Everybody else comes and while Julia <laughs> while uh Nats or sorry, while Nanai like takes out Julia for a second, puts uh basically lifts Julia, walks by the score uh keeper's table, or, or sorry, the ring announcer's table, grabs Rossi, try and tries to take Rossi with them up towards the casket. So 
uh, Rossi at one point stops off and gets away. And then um, as Julia seemingly has about to close the door on, um, close the casket on Nanai, um, you shows up, changes changes uh, the momentum. Every Everybody from D- Don Domano ins- inside the casket. And then all of a sudden, the Grim Reaper appears out of nowhere. Rossi, like, uh, fireman's carried, and a fireman's carry on the Grim Reaper's back. They throw his ass in the casket and let the casket down. Bro, I was hollering. I saw that tr- that clip on Twitter in no context. I was like, what the fuck is this? Bro, if you watch it, you will say the same thing. I was like, what is going on? Why did they have someone? Cause, okay, so the first volume of Sardom and Showcase, they had um, you in a, in a trio's casket match with Kamatani and Kid, and he was attacking Rossi. We didn't know I was saying she we didn't know who that was. And then like in the middle of the match, Kamatani and Kid get the mask off of you and you find out it's you. So we thought that we were gonna find out who this person was. We didn't. Who the fuck is this person? <laughs> like are we supposed to find in volume four? I don't know. Um but yeah, like as far as wrestling, this is probably the best one. Uh, I think that this, uh, I think this has, uh, two of the better matches from the start of the showcase thing. Cause they're actually messing match that are just ridiculous, goofy stuff. There's no, there's no cosmic angels in summer match or anything like that. No, oh, no all time or worst match of the year or, uh, uh, candidates Is that the beer um, pouring one, the one with Mina and, and, and Mina and Unagi and, and Nasapoy and yeah. And the wet t-shirts and all that kind of, yeah, there's no, there's nothing like that on this one. So this is much better. Um, but yeah, like it was just another goofy thing, and like this is this is totally optional uh, watching for starting. Like if you do not have the time, you do not have to watch this. If you have the time, you will watch something and see a couple matches you will enjoy, and that's kind of what it is. You take it or leave it with, with the Starman Showcase thing. Like, but I do appreciate that they're like we have three brands. <laughs> We have regular stardom, we have young, or we have new blood, and we have stardom in showcase. If you want to see wacky shit, and shit you'll never see on stardom, and you complain that the wrestlers don't do wacky, goofy shit, go watch stardom in showcase and enjoy your enjoy your mediocre show. Like that's nah, what it is. This is all stardom, you know. <laughs> it's all together. I, look, I agree, but I'm saying from a brand perspective, that's how they're doing. It's like if, if you if you are the person that if you are one of the few. Like weirdos that want to see them do wacky shit, like it's you know Tokyo Joshi Pro or DDT or whatever else. Take your ass here. <laughs> Go. You will. We will give you that every six weeks. But we're not doing it on the regular shows. People That's watch so this. Funny. People. People That's don't want to so feel. <laughs> people care about this. Yes. People don't want to be like, what is this? This. We, this is for the non-embarrassing wrestling. You want to see the embarrassing wrestling? Go here every six weeks. Start them in showcase. Incredible. Yeah, but that's all I got for Stardom. Uh, next next week, I'll probably have the... Uh, I don't know when the shows will be up. I don't know if it's a pay-per-view or not, but like the Tag League final is on the 4th. Cool, so it's man. Coming weekend. All right. That's awesome, man. Um, so I've been filling in more stuff for the One Nation Radio Awards uh, for this year. Uh, so James is going to add more stuff, and eventually we'll get to uh, some type of cut down on these things. But um, yeah look out for that soon make sure you guys are blessing us on the uh the cash app the paypal different stuff like that get your merch get your one nation radio shirts on social suplex and make sure you're downloading on the uh the one nation radio individual feed and uh appreciate everybody uh checking out the uh, youtube videos leaving lots of comments and we're just seeing the subscribers go up on that so that's really cool especially for as we, how much we put the clips out this year so well over 150 on there so uh the grind rolls on yeah that's the end of the show y'all thanks for listening be sure to raise some app you're using to listen this with um as rich mentioned like if you're watching from the stream you can look in the uh in the, in the bottom you see the paypal you see the cash app go there with the donations if you're listening from the podcast you can go to the show notes or description or show description and um find a link to our red circle and donate there and listen to the shows on the network um, besides one nation radio you have keeping the strong style the ricky and clyde wrestling show grum and watch this shit uh, the Grave Consequences Podcast, Eight Bit Suplex, All Things Elite. Uh, 
I'm going to say the AEW match guy. Um, yeah, actually, go to AEW match guy if you have not listened to the last episode and listened to Sam's last episode. Um, and um, get in the ring, great match generator, and meet the press slam. Thanks for listening, y'all. Later. Peace. Call of Duty Modern Warfare is here, and so is Mountain Dew. Roger that. Now you can unlock in-game rewards like only Dew can. Wait, what rewards? A Dew Operator Skin. Man, I love Operator Skins. Dual Double XP, and even Call of Duty Points. You're kidding me. Double XP and Call of Duty Points? This is incredible. I can't believe it. Soldier, get a hold of yourself. Oh, roger that. Look for specially marked packaging and visit mtndugaming.com for details and restrictions. Open to U.S. residents 17 plus. Call of Duty points available on 12 and 24 packs and 328 23.